Welcome back to another live stream. Hi everyone, how are you guys doing? I am so excited to be here and boy oh boy, tonight is an exciting night. The topic we're gonna talk about, there is just so much to unpack. Man, I don't even know where to begin. I have so many things I want to say. But yes, some updates first, right? But before that, coffee. Coffee always. Gonna show off my Canon white lens mug. Hmm, look at the red ring. Coffee is life. Hmm. Ah. Right, uh, quick updates. I have been really busy since I got back to Kuala Lumpur last Thursday. So I've only been back to Kuala Lumpur for about one week, right? And I remember last week, just before I started the stream, I got back to Kuala Lumpur from my hometown. So ever since then, I've been super busy. I have back-to-back -back shoots. I've had uh, paid jobs. I've had some projects I have to do. And in between, there's not much time left even to do a video. I did not do a video yet this week, but I did publish a video on Monday. Uh, so there was the Olympus 17 versus Panasonic 15. So which lens is better for street photography? for casual shoots I shared my thoughts uh, if you haven't seen the video do check it out it's already been published it's one of the popularly asked question and wow I was so busy I didn't have time to look at my phone or check what's happening and there was so many things happening at the same time and we are going to talk about it and of course the main thing is the announcement from OM Digital Solutions about the coming firmware update for the OM1 original. There is a lot of things leading up towards that event. Uh, there is the petition from photographers, OM Digital Solutions fans asking for that firmware and to the announcement, to the drama behind it. We will unpack it all and we will talk about it. But first, let's say hi to some people. We have some people here already. Odivio says, hello from Romania. Hey Odivio, how are you? Nice to see you here. Jerry Hukari, very nice to see you. Jerry says, good afternoon from warm Finland. It's one degrees Celsius. And that's how you define warm, right? It is 27 degrees here in my room. I have to go soon. We have our camera club meeting and subject there is tonight, creative nature photography stream later during the playback, right? No worries. I'm sure some of you have more important things to do than just listening to me here. Uh, talk, right? <laughs> who is Serafin? Hey, how are you? Very nice to see you again. Uh, who is Serafin says, I want Olympus to look at OM system and see what they have done to this once wonderful camera company and say, my God, we need to buy this company back. It's a dream, I know, but let me leave it okay. I don't think they're going to buy it back. There's a reason why they gave up on the imaging uh, division. They let it be it was carved out by Japan Industrial Partners. I don't think there's any way for them to come back in. Uh, they didn't completely abandon the Olympus. I think they still have like one over 20th of a share in the, the company. So they do have some say or influence to the direction of the company. Just saying, right? Corey, hey, how are you? Corey says, hi, Robin. Hi, Corey. Jeff Painter, very nice to see you here. Thanks for dropping by. Jeff says, hi, Robin and fellow enthusiasts. QQ says, help from Puerto Rico. Okay, help. <laughs> Spankson says, the link to the petition, maybe you can show it. Uh, if you click at the description below, uh, if you expand it, there is a link to the petition. But I can also share it directly here in the chat. Let me just paste the link here. And it is on the link here. I'm going to highlight it here. So there you go, Sparkson. That's the link to the petition. You can click it and please sign up. We still need more support, right? Yumi, hey, how are you, Yumi? Yumi says, hi, Robin. Hi, everyone. Let's do this. Yes, let's do this. <laughs> Icarus says, hi, everyone. Hey, Icarus, how are you? Greetings from Hong Kong. Own an OM1 and look forward to the firmware. Understand update OM1 will reduce the sale of OM1 Mark II, but want it as soon as possible. I don't think it will reduce the sale of OM1 Mark II. Uh, if it does, it is not OM1's or the OM1's firmware's fault. It is because the OM1 Mark II it's such a letdown, right? It's such an underwhelming camera to begin with. <laughs> Don't blame the original OM1 for that. 
Hedgehog Monroe says, Hi from the IOY UK. I've just been editing some of my photos from India and just posted my first batch of shots of the Golden Temple at Amritsar. All with OM1 12 to 40 and the 40 to 150 Pro. Wow, those must have been really awesome shots. Gordon says, Hi Robin and all, 6 o'clock here. What a great way to start the day. Already hitting the like button. Thank you so much. Wow, that's really early. I usually only got up at around 7 or 7.30 in the morning. Well, 6, that's crazy. Hey, uh, sunrise here is about 7.30 in, in Kuala Lumpur. I think at times it's 7.15. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely too early for me. Huri Serafin says, I miss coffee. Giving up a year ago. Why did you give up coffee? Coffee is so awesome. I, I cannot survive without coffee. PSJ Walter says, hello from Belgium, Peter. Hey, Peter. Nice, nice to see you here. Uh, Eric says, hi, Robin. Greetings from the Netherlands. Keep up the good work. No worries, Eric. Thank you so much. Very nice to see you. Entrik. Hey, Entrik. How are you? Very, very happy to see you. Thanks for dropping by, Entrik. Entrik says, how are you from the Virginia, USA? Thank you so much. Jose says, hello Robin and everybody, hope you are well, I'm doing quite alright, I've been a little bit busy with shoots and all, uh, greetings again from Mexico, thank you for dropping by again, very nice to see you, wow, this has no name, so hi from Newcastle, hello to you, no name guy, <laughs> Tobias says, hello everyone, and greetings from Germany, hey Tobias, very nice to see you, Carl Richards says, hi, hope you are well, hi Carl, very nice to see you. I am doing quite okay. I'm very, very excited to get into this topic tonight. Just going to say hi to a few more people and we will jump right in, right? There's, a, there's quite a few of you here. Let me check. Uh, Luke, Lukas says, greetings from Poland. Any news about the OM5 Mark II? No, I have... Obviously, I have no association or connection to OM Digital Solutions. Uh... I don't receive any communication from them, so if they have anything, I wouldn't know, right? Uh, whatever rumors that's flying out there, if you hear it, I hear it, we hear from the same source. <laughs> Watch says, hello from Argentina. Hey, Watch, how are you? John23 says, hello from Slovenia. Hey, John, nice to see you here. Crispy says, hello from Munich. As ever, great job, Robin. Thank you so much. Well, I've caught up with the comments and I want to start talking about this topic. Now, before I want to, I want to, of course, I have so much to say. I have so many opinions. I have thoughts. I have things I want to talk about. Uh, but before we dive too far into, you know, my, my, my opinion about what's happening recently, right, all the drama and everything, uh, I do want to list down or at least bring Break it down the chronology of events, right? I wanted to talk about go right back in the beginning, uh, talk about the key events that's leading up to the announcement of the firmware update for the OM1. So we're gonna go all the way back to the OM1 two years ago. So about two years ago, the OM1 was launched, right? Uh, I think a lot of people are very excited. Finally, OM Digital Solutions, they have their own flagship camera. And this is like the, the next best thing, right? And a lot of people think that this is like, wow, the wow camera, but I don't think so. I have a different opinion, but that comes in a little bit later. Uh, oh, oh my goodness. We have, <laughs> I have to interrupt my 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 own talk for a bit because i have a super chat from eric eric says monthly contribution be back shortly about to eat breakfast with co-workers oh eric you are too generous thank you so much for the super chat and don't worry about this stream if you need to go to work you need to do something go right you can always come back and check this stream later i'm not going anywhere i'll be here for about two to three hours and uh even if you can't make it back in time you can watch this in the playback later but i really appreciate appreciate the super chat. I appreciate all the support I can get from you guys. Uh, I've always said this, but I'm going to say this again. Running this YouTube channel, creating content, it does cost money. And I use my own funds uh, to, to, to make content, right? Uh, sometimes equipments or things break down, like the tripod or SD cards or spare batteries or lighting, like this lighting setup. You can see this room with the microphone and everything. Everything costs money for me to do live streaming, to make videos every week. I use my own funds. So any contribution from you will take some burden off my shoulders and help me to continue to make more content for you guys. So wow, Eric, that is super, super generous. I really appreciate you. All right, back to the topic. Now, where were we? <laughs> yes, the OM1 was launched, right? And it was 
one of the highlights of the from OM Digital Solutions, right? But when they launched this OM1, they also <laughs> state this in their website, the official website. It says that we offer regular, robust firmware updates to protect your investment. After all, we know you're always shooting for perfection, right? So they, they promised right from the start during the OM1 launch that they offer regular, robust firmware updates. Now, I want you to keep this in a placeholder. This will come back uh, later on. This will be quite relevant in just a little while. So they launched the OM1, and during the launch, they promised that the OM1 is gonna get regular, robust firmware updates. Now, of course, I did not buy the OM1 immediately. Uh, it, I, I've also made a video to talk about why I didn't want to buy the OM1 because I don't need it. Uh, it is a great camera, but the features, uh, I, I'm actually very happy with my EM1 Mark III at that time, so I didn't buy it. But about half a year later, a very generous uh, supporter, a very generous uh, viewer, subscriber, right? Uh, he emailed me and said, hey Robin, I want to send you an OM1. It came from the US. So I received the OM1 as a gift, right? So I got the OM1 camera. I was very happy. I went out and shoot, did a few jobs. Uh, I shared my opinion on the videos. I did find some problems with the camera I didn't like. Some issues there and here, some of them are quite minor, especially the autofocus. The autofocus performance was not as good as the EMR Mark II, EM5 Mark III, or the EMR Mark III, right? The single autofocus in low light, low contrast, it was not as reliable as the older cameras. So the OM1, while I was using it to shoot my jobs, I brought it out to shoot my jobs, a professional shoots, I miss shots. And if you stay long enough in the stream later, in the second or third hour, I will share some of those photographs to illustrate the situation where the OM1 can fail, right? So I thought, wow, this is a problem. I reported the problem. I got mixed reviews in those videos. All the three videos are still there. I've always been very honest with my findings. If I don't like something, if I see some problem, I will report it as honestly as I can. And I published the videos. And of course, there are some experts out there who will come and discredit at me and say, Robin, obviously you don't know how to use the OM1. Robin, the OM1's autofocus is perfect. Robin, the OM1's autofocus is the best out there. And these experts, they even came to me and say, Robin, here is a solution for your problem. All you have to do is just enlarge an area of the live view and you can focus already using a single autofocus or continuous autofocus. And I was like, seriously? You being a self-claimed expert, do you even shoot photographs? Like if you're shooting events and shooting dance, stage performance, things happening on stage, right? Let's say that it's a live concert, there's dance, there's the, the, the singers moving around, or even theater, which I do a lot, right? People don't stay still. While they move, are you gonna enlarge the screen, focus, and then you go back to the full view and then you click the shutter button? No, because things move all the time, right? <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, so that was in the past, and of course, I was hoping that this particular issue, the problem with the single autofocus and continuous autofocus being not very reliable in low contrast and low light situation can be fixed in firmware. I was hoping that it can be fixed in firmware update, right, for the OM1, after all the promised regular robust updates. Now, here is the problem. <laughs> The last update that they made for the OM1 was in May 2023. That's about eight months ago. It doesn't sound very regular to me. Eight months ago, right? And I don't know, it's like in between, some people actually ask the official representatives in interviews and everything, and they say, yes, the autofocus performance can be updated in firmware. And this came out in official news, official statement from the official representatives from OM Digital Solutions. They say, yes, new features and the autofocus capabilities can be updated by firmware. Right? It's in an interview somewhere. I don't have the screenshot, but you can find it easily, right? But we have not received any updates. And mind you, all the updates we have gotten for the OM1 up to this point, they are just incremental minor updates. Those updates, they don't change anything drastic. They don't fix any problems. And the most, the most 
annoying problem of what they I got that actually affected my job was the single autofocus and continuous autofocus in low light, low contrast. It was not fixed, all right? So anyways, <laughs> what happened next? Of course, suddenly they launch the OM1 Mark II in January. Wow, without fixing any problems or without updating the OM1 for more than half a year, suddenly they come up with a successor, the OM1 Mark II. Now, boy oh boy, when this camera was launched, the reaction was almost overwhelmingly negative. If you're saying something positive about the OM1 Mark II, it's either you are an ambassador, you are a diehard fan, you have the OM system tattooed in your back or something, other than that, I don't see how you can call this the next best thing or a, a, a true successor to the OM-1. It's basically the same camera, using the same body, it has the same image sensor, it has the image, same image processor, it has the same... Almost everything is the same. The EVF is the same, the LCD screen is the same, the, the, the weather ceiling rating is the same. Almost everything is the same. Of course, there's some upgrades, like the RAM is improved, the buffer is improved, they added some new features there and here, computational features like live grad ND, they added uh, the human AI tracking and so on, and they said that they fixed, they didn't fix, but they improved the autofocus performance, right? But boy oh boy, I would say that, that the online backlash was spectacular. If you have observed what everyone is saying in the, the forums or online groups, it was spectacular. I was just observing. I wasn't sharing much of my thoughts. In fact, I was actually very neutral about this OM Mark II, right? So what happened next, right? So OM Mark II was, was launched and it has gotten some really bad reviews. And the photographer says this is the world's most expensive firmware update that costs $2,399. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people seem to think that a lot of the improvements and the features in the OM1 Mark II can, in fact, be added into the OM1 by firmware. And it doesn't seem like it's a drastic change. You get the same image quality. You get about the same autofocus performance. Everything is about the same. The camera size is the same. The body looks the same. Everything is the same, right? So it's just minor improvements there and here. It's just added one or two features. There's nothing major. It's just as if this is an expensive firmware update. It's not even like you pay a, a minor subscription cost or minor fee for a firmware, right? But no, they force you to, you know, if you want all these features, you have to pay for a completely new camera that actually is like almost 99% like the OM-1, which is a little bit ridiculous. Like, I wouldn't say that I completely agree with the photographer and what they say in this particular article, but it is what it is, right? It is the sentiment of what a lot of people are thinking as well. And it's kind of hard to disagree at this point. <laughs> So, of course, after all this hoo-ha on the OM-1 Mark II, uh, it seems like it's a firmware, and then the OM-1 has no firmware, and a lot of people are asking for the firmware. I was actually approached by the petition group, the firmware petition group, about two weeks ago. So I was approached by someone from the petition group, and they're, all they're asking me is just, hey, Robin, we want to start a petition on this OM-1's firmware. We're requesting OM system to act to release a firmware update for the OM-1. Are you interested to help us spread the word? Now, disclaimer, full disclaimer, I am not involved in the group. I don't know anyone from the petition group. Uh, they just email me out of nowhere, and I look at the, what, what they have to say, and I actually agree with what they want to do, and I support the effort. Uh, our uh, our wants and our requests from my system, they align. I do think that OM1 deserves support. I think it's the flagship of OM Digital Solutions. They should give the customers support. They should listen to the customers and they should at least give some more updates for the OM1 at least to fix some of the serious problems and add in some new features, right? After all, that's what they promised. Now, here's the thing that a lot of people don't know and this is important here. The petition group, the online petition group, they actually had already emailed the CEO of OM Digital Solutions. I think the, the date was early, somewhere early February. It's 9 of February, if I'm not mistaken. They told me this, right? And they have 
told in, in that email to the CEO, they actually asked them to change the position and they asked on digital solutions to release a firmware update for the OM1. But there was a silence. They didn't hear anything back from on digital solutions. That is what prompted them to start this petition. Now, this online petition, this website was supposed to go live last week before my live stream. At least that was what they told me. There was some technical issue they had to fix. So I went on my live stream. I had to go on. I cannot change my topic because I've pre-announced it. So I went on my live stream last week to talk about why firmware updates are important. And I shared some very important points like previously EM1 and EM1 Mark II, they received so much firmware updates to have the new features like silence shutter, electronic first curtain shutter, they have um, keystone compensation, focus stacking, that even the EM1 Mark II received a new uh, autofocus algorithm from the EM1 X, improved continuous autofocus for video, they rework uh, uh, video recording mode, they even have OM Log 400, the list is just endless, right? The, the firmware updates they get, it's like firmware two, three, four, and it keeps, these cameras, they keep getting updated more and more to fix bugs, to improve the efficiency of the camera, to improve the performance of the camera. The camera just gets better and better. Even after three years, the EMR Mark, Mark II received the firmware 3.0, and it's as if it's a new camera, right? So we want the same thing for the OM-1. We're just looking at the history of Olympus. It was last week. So that was last Thursday, right? And so, I already went on to talk about the firmware update, why it's important before the petition was announced. And the petition went live last Tuesday. So it was midnight here in Malaysia. I received an email and the group told me, hey, the petition is live. So I wrote an article about it on my blog. I published on my Facebook page and I started uh, announcing this stream, which we're gonna talk about this firmware update and this petition particularly, right? So that was about, Two days ago, it was Tuesday night. Okay, I'm gonna stop here for a bit because I have another super chat from True Warrior. Thank you so much, True Warrior. Uh, I really appreciate the super chat. And like I said, any contribution from you guys is deeply, deeply, deeply appreciated. And they will definitely help me to make more content. And I have so much to share. I'm really excited to go out and shoot and I wanna bring you guys along with me, right? All right, thank you so much, True Warrior. And now back to the topic, we're still on the chronological order of events. Now, the petition went live two days ago. Now, here is the thing. Within 12 hours, I don't have the exact time. Within 12 hours, OM Digital Solutions suddenly broke silence and they responded. The first announcement they made, was it was done in their Japanese website. It wasn't in the press release, it wasn't in the official English website, it was in the Japanese website. They were announcing through translation that the OM1 will get a firmware update in fall. <laughs> now, a lot of things happened after this. So a lot of people saw that announcement and then they emailed uh, their representatives, respectively, wherever they are in the country, and the representatives officially reply and say they have no clue whatsoever about the coming from where. I think there was a communication breakdown internally in the OM Digital Solutions. They suddenly responded with a uh, announcement that the firmware is coming without informing, without having a proper communication with other countries. And suddenly everyone is caught off guard. And of course, a few hours later, they sent out the press release, the website, the English website is updated. And of course, uh, huge photography sites like DP Review also announced this press release saying that OM1 will receive the firmware update. It was a mess. It was so much drama, man, I cannot imagine, right? And yes, yesterday, we have this official announcement of firmware update plan for the OM1. We will dissect this announcement. There's not too much to look at. Honestly, it was a very short statement. We will talk about what this means, how they responded, uh, do they really respond? Is this just to quiet down the, all the noise? Or is it the firmware that we have been waiting for? <laughs> there is so many things to talk about here and I want to go go through them one by one. Wow, so we have caught up with the events. Summary, OM1 was launched. OM Digital Solutions promised that they will update the firmware. They didn't. 
I got the OM1 as a gift. I found some issues with the camera. I hope it was fixed in the firmware. It wasn't. The last firmware we received was in May 2023. Without any updates, without fixing the problem, without adding new features, suddenly OM Digital Solutions launched the OM1 Mark II in January this year. And the OM1 Mark II is like 99% the same with the OM1 Mark I. Added a few features, very minor updates, minor improvements. The camera has the same sensor, same image quality, same performance, just minor tweaks there and here. And you're expected to pay a lot for that. And the photographer reported that's the most expensive firmware update ever, right? I, I'm not going to say anything about that. It is what it is. He said it, right? And a lot of people seem to agree. Now... I received word from the petition group and I su fully support them. I sign up the petition. You should too if you've not done so. Link in the description below. Please sign up the petition. And after I've announced the petition, OM Digital Solutions suddenly, suddenly responded in less than a day with official statement announcing the coming firmware. We will, there's a lot more to talk about. There's so much to go through. But boy, oh boy, I wanted to read comments first. Coffee first, coffee before comments. <laughs> Man, there's so much drama. David says, I hope the new autofocus improvements are more obvious than the last improvements. Yeah, I doubt that. If you have read the statement, it specifically said that it will not have the autofocus performance of the OM1 Mark II. All right, we'll talk about that in a while. Alexander says, Switzerland. Hello, Switzerland. Hello, Alexander. Nice to see you here. Michael says, hello from Michigan. I learned some things, some, sometimes many things from each of your videos. Thanks for your hard work. No worries, Michael. And thanks for watching. I appreciate the views. I appreciate the, the, the subscribe, the likes and the comments, right? And I'm glad that you found my videos useful. Uh, I do my part to share as much as I can. And I hope that my small contribution is beneficial to, to the community, right? So thank you so much, Michael, for letting me know. And of course, there's a lot more content coming as well. Dave says, hi, Arvin. Hey, Dave, how are you? Jens M says, greetings from Norway. Hey, Jens, very nice to see you here again. How are you? David says, the OM1 Mark II is what the OM1 should have been. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. I think the OM1 was fine. Of course, there are some issues that I've reported. It's just that I want the OM1 Mark II to be a lot better. <laughs> but that's a separate discussion, right? Dodge Viper says, what some people don't want to understand is not about the free luxury firmware updates, it's about fixing problems. We OM1 owners just want problems fixed. I know, right? And uh, it is very troubling to see that a flagship level camera, the, the OM1, uh, can fail in a very simple shoot. Uh, and I've missed shots. And if I were to use the EMR Mark II or EMR Mark III, I have 100% certainty that these cameras can perform and I can have very high hit rate with no issue whatsoever. I wouldn't hesitate using this. In fact, I'm more confident using the older cameras than the OM1. That's why my EMR Mark II is my workhorse now instead of the OM1. Dodge says, greetings from Hamburg, Germany. Hey, Dodge, very nice to see you here. True Warrior says, signed the petition. Have both the OM1 Mark I and OM5. It would be great to get an update for OM5 as well. I know, right? We need updates across at least the OM1, OM5, right? The top two cameras. It's not like they have that many cameras now, right? OM Digital Solutions. I'm not asking them to update older cameras. Like at least update their own current line of cameras they have released, right? That would be great. Ooh, we have a super chat from Entrique. Thank you so much, Entrique. You, you contribute every single week. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate that. <clears throat> True Warrior says, great that you promote this. Thank you. No worries. I do my part. Uh... As a Micro Four Thirds supporter, I am a Micro Four Thirds fan and I do want Micro Four Thirds to succeed. And the only way on Digital Solutions and Panasonic can succeed is for them to listen to customers. Panasonic has been doing a great job releasing firmware updates for the cameras though, in contrast to OM Digital Solutions. So there you go. Jeff says, I talked to the OM system rep in Denver on 3rd of February and was told they would be updating firmware in the future. Everyone is getting their panties in a bunch about nothing. Now, here's the thing, Jeff. Future. That's very subjective, right? Now, 
in the announcement, official announcement, not just some conversation with a random rap that may or may not know anything, in that official announcement from On Digital Solutions, it says the firmware is coming in fall. That's about more than six months from now. And if you look at the details of that announcement, it is just a minor upgrade. Why, are, why is it taking them so long for such a minor firmware upgrade? Why can't we have it now if it's just a simple fix? And why don't they do this or why haven't they prepared this months ago? The last update was in May. And if we haven't done anything, if the petition wasn't online, if I haven't shouted on my live, live stream, if no one has complained, I'm not saying I'm the only one, a lot of people have done their part emailing, bombarding on digital solutions. If we haven't voiced our concerns, they will not be responding and we wouldn't know if they are doing any firmware update at all. Okay, at least we get a response, not an official one. But if you look at the response, it's so minor. And yet it takes them such a long time. It doesn't make sense. It's as if, okay, now let's just do the firmware update to make them happy. Oh, we haven't had anything done yet. Okay, let's just start doing it. How long will it take? Maybe three, four months. Let's just add some buffer, six months. Okay, we'll launch it in fall. It's as if they just do a last minute announcement to quiet down all these chatters and all these complaints that we are raising to them. If they truly have a firmware update ready, they would have released it by now. Where is it? Jeff, where is it? <laughs> Hash Sang says, look at the Nikon Z9 Z8. Endless updates just got me buying it today. You see, firmware updates will encourage people to buy cameras. Man. Now, Nicole says, hello, Robin. Your live streams are always so interesting. Thank you so much. I try my best. I try my best. I'm waiting for a new firmware for my OM5. Seriously, I love Micro Four Thirds mounts, and I just hope Micro Four Thirds doesn't disappear in the next few years. I hope the same too, and I truly want to fight for Micro Four Thirds. That's why we're here talking about this, and we do want Micro Four Thirds or OM Digital Solutions to take this more seriously. Jeff says, first of all, Olympus reps right now suck, at least in the US, and I glorified salesmen, but at least one knew something. <laughs> I'm not going to comment about that because I'm not in the US and I haven't seen any of the reps, right? Uh, but definitely, some of the communication got broken down somewhere. It, it, was, it was a mess yesterday, if you really follow what's happening. Lucas says, I'm curious if they will update OM5 menu to make it consistent with OM1. Here's the thing, right? If they wanted to update it, they would have done it already. But no, I don't think this is going to happen. This side towards screen says, I wonder if the firmware update is connected to intellectual property from Olympus and our system is unable to upgrade. I wonder what the financial situation with OM. I'm sure it can be worked out because after all, Olympus, the parent companies, they still have one over 20 of share in the OM Digital Solutions company they still have some influence and they can help and i'm sure they want om digital solutions to succeed there is no point for them to hold back the intellectual property right richard says good morning from pennsylvania hey richard good morning to you too thanks for dropping by Gub Gamer says, hi from Sweden. Hey Gub, very nice to see you here. Sixtus Vatmesser says, in that previous stream, I had mentioned that an OM boycott may be more effective than a petition. Whatever works. Now, here's the thing, right? I think boycott would do more harm than good. Like, I don't want the company to die. Continue buying on Digital Solutions products. It's just that I want them to, to produce better products, right? Yeah. Fabrizio says, uh, hi Robin from Italy. Hey Fabrizio, how are you? Very nice to see you here. Masish says, we need new OM system pan camera to compete with other high-end compacts. Yeah, definitely it's, some time, uh, it's about time that they consider more compact cameras like the pan line. We look into the pan F or EPL line. I think these cameras will definitely sell very well. I uh, look at what uh, Fuji X100 Mark VI, which just came out, right? It is like the, the, the broke records in history of how many pre-orders that Fuji has received. That camera was so high in demand, I think it will be sold out everywhere and it will be out of production and it will be in serious back order 
the supply will be a problem for that Fuji X100 uh, Mark VI. Just mark my words. It just shows that these smaller cameras, more compact cameras, has a place, right? I just don't know why OM Digital Solutions is not seeing this. Like, why are they missing out on this opportunity, right? It's, it's free money, seriously. Boris says, Hi Robin, does color science matter if you shoot RAW? Do you like Lumix color science? Uh, generally, I'm okay with most cameras, but... The reason newer Lumix, okay, by new Lumix cameras, I'm talking about G9, not the G9 Mark II. I haven't had a chance to, to try a G9 Mark II yet. I've tried the G9, GH5, GH4. I don't like the color science. Uh, but, but then again, color is subjective. And I know that if you spend enough time in Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever uh, image editing software of your choice, if you do spend enough time tweaking with the sliders, you can get to the color that you like eventually anyway, right? You can manipulate the, 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 the image. Uh, to your heart's content. But uh, if you look at the image that comes out immediately, uh, the color science from the, the few Panasonic cameras that I've just mentioned, I'm not happy about the color. Jens says, I don't think they had any further fixing firmware updates planned. <laughs> That's the thing, right? They never planned anything. And because uh, earlier in February, the petition group when uh, sent an email to the CEO prompting them that, hey, we, we want something, right? They're requesting for a firmware. So they were already preparing for, for things to come. And then the petition went online and they said they have to respond, right? At least to, to quiet down the storm, right? Gup says, hi from Sweden. I'm thinking about migrating from my Nikon 5, D500 to the OM-1 system. Should I wait? I think if you want to upgrade to the OM-1, just, just upgrade. Uh, the camera is fine, depending on what you do. Uh, if you are doing wildlife photography, I think, or if you're shooting birds, the OM-1 is a huge upgrade from the D500 because it has the bird detection AI tracking, which works like magic, right? Uh, and it's a lot smaller than the D500, coupled with smaller lenses. And these lenses are super sharp. Uh, it's definitely good for wildlife uh, if, if you're into that. But depends on what kind of photography that you do. Uh, yeah, if you want to migrate to OM-1, go for it, right? There's nothing stopping you. Jeff says, Robin, you're right. There are a lot of winners out there. Yeah, I know, right? Ryan says, OM Systems hasn't really done anything to make me want to upgrade for my EMA Mark II. Yeah, I'm still using my EMA Mark II as my main camera right for my jobs <laughs> Burana hey Burana how are you good evening from Bangkok is there from an update for EMA Mark II there have been so many from an updates for EMA Mark II man like seriously it's changed it to a completely new camera in fact the first ever video that I did on this channel in 2019 was the firmware 3.0 for the EMA Mark II Think about that. It was the firmware update of a camera that got me started on this YouTube journey. Talk about coincidence, right? Why I'm so worked up about this non-existent firmware update for the, the OM-1. Hesha Maro says, It's taking so long because they must have very few or even no one working on it at the moment. I say this as I am or was until retirement an embedded firmware engineer. That's not an excuse, right? And... If you can't deliver, don't promise anything in the first place. If you have already started it out so boldly on your website, promising regular, robust firmware updates, and you have been doing it, right? Like previously in Olympus, they've been doing it so much, and they were doing a good job during Olympus time for EM1, EM1 Mark II, and EM1X, right? And now everyone else is doing it. Nikon is doing a fantastic job with the Z8 and Z9 firmware updates. Uh, Sony is doing a great job in firmware updates. Even Fuji is also doing a great job in firmware updates, right? Panasonic is doing a fantastic job. The only one not doing is OM Digital Solutions, and if you are missing out, and if customers still want to support you, you got to listen to your customers, right? Andrew says, hello, late to the party. No worries, Andrew. I'm very happy to see you here. How are you, Andrew? Thanks for dropping by. Chris V says, I'll continue with my EMA Mark II. For me, that's the perfect camera. I will wait until OM System will make up step, make a huge step technically, yeah. EMA Mark II is still a fantastic camera. I have no issue with that camera. I still use it now. 
Pete says, the new firmware announcement sounded pretty underwhelming to me. Well, it is a direct response to the online petition, right? Because everyone is making so much noise and now we are getting like 1,000 signups for the petition already. 1,000 people signed the petition already. And the number is just going to grow. This is less than two days. We get 1,000 signatures. And they are worried. They're worried that there's so much noise happening. They just want to say, hey, you know what? You guys want to know when this firmware is coming? It is coming. It is coming in four which honestly is not inspiring confidence, right? Why can't we have it now? What have we been doing in the past six, seven months? Like since May last year, like seriously, you're not doing anything, right? And there are some serious problems that needs fixing, like seriously, like yeah. Gordon says, any idea of that March 4th update from a group of OM ambassadors maybe? Originally, I thought it might be about firmware updates. I have no idea. <laughs> and I think they wouldn't tell me if even if I asked them, right? They have to keep quiet for obvious reasons. If it's a firmware or product announcements, they are probably under NDA. Uh, we we'll just have to wait until March 4th to find out what the announcement is. And I will tune in uh, with you guys and find out <laughs> at the same time. Hopefully it's something interesting. I'm also quite excited with the tease, right? David says, hopefully OM system is learning just how passionate people are about their micro four thirds cameras. They are so lucky to have us. You know, they, have, they haven't really been doing or making the right decisions recently or the past few years, and yet we are still here. <laughs> and I'm still using OM1, I'm still using EMR Mark II, I'm still using OM system products. I'm shooting with micro four thirds. I'm still making content with micro four thirds. I'm still talking about micro four thirds, right? And it's not just me, but there's a lot of us here. There's so many uh, OM system and micro four thirds fans and content creators, and we still root for them, right? The only thing they have to do is just listen. They just have to listen, right? Which they don't, I don't know why. Millennium says, hi, do you still recommend 5D Classic for a beginner? Or should I just take 6D? Is the color science really that special for 5D? Uh, Here's the thing, how much is your budget? I think the 6D is probably gonna cost at least 50% more or twice of the asking price of the 5D, considering both cameras are about the same condition. Of course, you, you can't compare, say, a bash up uh, 300,000 shot account 6D versus a, a brand new, uh, almost like new condition 5D, right? Of course, the, the price gap is not gonna be far, but let's say both cameras are about the same condition. Let's say both of them are worn out, have high shot account. I think the 6D will still cost about 50% or at least twice more than the 5D. So if you have the cash, uh, if budget is not concerned, 6D is a great camera. It's very small, it's smaller and lighter than 5D. Uh, autofocus is slightly better than 5D. Uh, image quality has improved, right? It's a new sensor, 20 megapixels, uh, better high ISO, better dynamic range. Uh, the camera itself is more modern, it's more reliable compared to the 5D. 5D was like one of the first few DSLRs from Canon. Uh, it was a legendary DSLR and I have the 5D. And my next video next Monday is gonna be 5D. Please tune in for that video, uh, wait for the video to come out. And I talk about why the 5D or the older DSLRs are perfect for learning photographers. And either camera, you won't go wrong. I think you'll enjoy it, either the 5D or 60. It's just that if you have more money, go for the 60, right? If, if budget is a, con uh, is a concern, which is to a lot of people, no shame in admitting that. I admit that I'm not a rich person. And when I think about buying gear, I always think about my budget and how much money I can save, right? If, if you are thinking about budget, then the, the 5D is, is still a fantastic camera. Sixus Batmaster says, I'm holding on to my beloved EMR Mark II, even though I'm trading in my G9 for a G9 Mark II. Yeah. I think G9 Mark II is like <laughs> currently looking really good, right? After all this drama from OM Digital Solutions, it offers like significant uh, improvements. It has a new sensor, like higher resolution bump. Uh, in terms of video recording, it has like 4K uh, 120. It has a uh, better bit rate. It has better codec. Everything is better in terms of video department, right? So yeah, it seems like G9 Mark II is a, a better deal at the moment. Chris says, Hi Robin, I think OM system should have come up with bigger RAM and better CPU from the first launch two years back. Just a thought. Well, it's too late now. Uh, there's always a what if. Like, I also think that should have used a better image sensor, but it is what it is. We can't change the past. They can't go back and change the camera. It has been launched. The important thing is what they do 
as we move forward and definitely there are some issues with the OM1 which I think can be fixed with firmware and they should fix these problems and there are some features that they promise that they can add and they should add these features as well. Boris says, do you think OM system is on the way of becoming Pentax or even worse than Pentax because Rico is a bigger company now? Nah. I think they're just doing their own thing. Like Pentax is doing their own thing and OM Visual Solutions is just doing their own thing. They, they are both very different companies. They have very different aims or ambitions, right? Rima says, OM1 or even OM Mark II is useless after the release of Gen Mark II in terms of functionality. Useless is a very strong word. I would say less exciting is a better phrase to describe your sentence. How can you call a camera useless? As long as you can click the shutter button, it takes photos. If you hit the record button, it records a video, right? And at the right hand, at, at a capable photographer or videographer, you can still create art. So calling a camera useless because a better camera is announced, I don't condone that. So yeah, I would change that useless to maybe less exciting or less enticing, right? In terms of functionality, price, company support. G9 Mark II is a long runner, same as G9 Mark I. All right, so just change. I, I don't agree with the word useless here. Gordon says, I thought the firmware announcement seemed reasonable except for the time. Why so late? It's not just the time, right? I agree with you. Why so late? But it's so minor, right? Like they, there's only two things that I promised. Autofocus improvement and changing of that, that, the menu button to the trash button. Just two things. It takes them, what? Like more than six months to accomplish that? Like, really? <laughs> I, I thought they can do better, right? Kelvin says, hi from Subago Lake, Maine. Hey, Kelvin, very nice to see you here. How are you? Brana says, there should be an OM Pan F uh, with full water resistance, 40 megapixels, seven stops. I asked, wow, you are asking a lot. But hey, I think Pan F at this point will fly. Just look at the X100V, uh, X100 Mark VI, sorry, uh, from Fuji, right? Uh, it's flying everywhere now. I, I'm sure uh, this request is definitely going to gain traction. All right, uh, I've caught up with the comment. I'm going to drink some coffee. And we will continue diving into the topic today about the firmware update. So much to talk about. <laughs> mm. Okay. Now, where were we? We were in the firmware, right? So the firmware update was announced. Okay. And it's a very short announcement. It's on the screen. You can see it. There's only a few things to take note. One. It's going to be available in fall. I don't know when fall is. Is that September, October this year? Late this year. Is that definitely the last quarter of the year? And they only promised two things, right? Two improvements, which is autofocus improvement of some performance capabilities, such as single autofocus and continuous autofocus in all target mode to improve capture of main subjects. So it says autofocus, number one, improvement of some autofocus performance capabilities some autofocus capabilities right and i'm not sure if this is going to address the problem in low contrast and low light shooting scenario i hope they do because all i want is for them to improve the reliability and efficiency of the autofocus to match the older cameras like the em1 mark 3 or the em1 x this is a new flagship uh, it should be at least on the same level as the old cameras i'll be happy i don't even need the autofocus to be better i just need it to be as good right but they didn't say here this is said improvement of auto autofocus performance maybe they don't want to admit that there was a fault and they'll secretly fix the problem i hope that's the case in any way i will not complain if they really fix the problem i will be very very happy then i can actually use the om1 for my actual jobs but it says here number one autofocus improvement of some autofocus performance capabilities and the second thing that they promise is operability which improves usability through the option to assign the delete button as the menu access shortcut just assigning the button for some other function that's easily programmable right now just these two things it takes them six months or more and if you count it from the date of the last firmware update, which was in May 2023, that's one and a half years too late. Just for these two 
Improvements, okay, maybe there are other features not mentioned here or other fixes or improvements or any, any changes they didn't include here. This is just an initial announcement. It was made in a hurry. I understand that. But just this is a bit underwhelming, right? Furthermore, they clarify, please note the following. It will not include new features introduced in the OMR Mark II, such as live graduated neutral density filter and AI detection for humans. So live grad ND and human AI will be excluded in this firmware update. Wow. Didn't they promise at some point that the autofocus performance can definitely be improved? At least on the firmware update level, some of the spokesperson or the interview in the past with the representatives, they have mentioned that autofocus can be improved and can be done at the firmware, right? In the future firmware updates. And suddenly they say, you see in the second point, it will provide some autofocus performance improvements. Therefore, the autofocus performance will not match the OM1 Mark II. I'm, I'm not sure whether this is due to hardware. If they, if they say, if there's some hardware in the OM1 Mark II that they've they have included that is superior to OM1, why don't they just say that, oh, in the OM1 Mark II, we've included this new sensor technology for autofocus. We've improved the autofocus hardware, which the OM1 doesn't have. Why didn't they say that? If it's impossible to do via firmware update, why didn't they just mention, oh, because OM1 did not have the capability to match the performance of the OM1 Mark II. They didn't say that. It just shows, and previously they promised that the autofocus performance can be improved further, can be evolved further over time by firmware update. And this is not happening. Now that there's a new camera, suddenly this is not possible. Bear in mind, back then the EMR Mark II was launched in uh, 2019. And then in 2021, the EMR X was launched. And they ported over the autofocus algorithm from the EM1X to the EM1 Mark II. They replaced the autofocus algorithm altogether. Single autofocus, continuous autofocus, tracking, video, steals, everything is reworked. And they got the EM1X autofocus performance. And we don't get that with the OM1. And suddenly it says, oh, now we have OM1 Mark II. It's impossible to do that. They've done it, but now it's impossible. I how? <laughs> How is this inspiring confidence? And we have to wait more than half a year for this minor improvement? This is just insane, right? Looking back at these uh, improvements, there's just too minor. I think OM1 deserves a lot more, right? Man. <laughs> and it's, it feels like they have just started working on this firmware. Like recently, like when, at the launch of the OM Mark II, uh, they got all this backlash, right? All these complaints saying that, oh, this is just a firmware update. And then they, a lot of people request for the OM One's firmware update, right? And they were like, okay, let's just make these people happy. Let's just make a new firmware for the OM One. It was never in the plan anyway. Okay, there are two possibilities here. One, they can make it. They purposely didn't make it so that, you know, people will buy OM One Mark II, which I think is a very flawed scenario or very flawed decision. I think it's not wise <laughs> because you already have a group of supporters, OM1, you don't want to lose them, right? Or secondly, they just say, nah, we just completely abandoned this firmware update for the OM1 and just focus on the new products, OM1 Mark II. I don't know which one is worse, right? Because you have promised regular updates for the OM1 and you didn't do it, whether it was completely abandoned or whether <laughs> They, they can do it. They just decided not to do it and just delay it on purpose. I don't know. Both, I think no matter how you look at it, whatever decisions they have made, it didn't inspire confidence. And we definitely deserve better as OM1 supporters. I think the OM1 camera deserves better. I think it deserves some more upgrades, uh, definitely fix some of the problems. And definitely, we want this firmware to happen sooner than later. And you can help, right? You can, if you haven't done so, please sign the petition. The link is in the description below. You just expand the description. There's a petition. You can go and sign and help out uh, by showing up our voice. I think the petition is the best way for us to have our voices heard. It shows that we are together. We have a common goal and we are seeking or we are requesting this format update in a, the most peaceful possible manner, right? <laughs> and yeah, we just want our voices heard, right? 
All right, I'm going to go to the comments. Boris says, I am confused. What is this thing on Digital Solutions wants to do now? Making the best crop sensor for action, wildlife, and macro, or the idea of pen series, a good, small, affordable, but capable camera? They haven't released any pen cameras, hey. Uh, but definitely, if you look at the website, if you look at their promotional material, if you look at what their ambassadors or any the videos they've made, uh, it's all centered on action. Not really action, really. I didn't see any action. It's more like wildlife and nature, right? No action whatsoever. So it's more focused on wildlife, nature, and maybe a little bit of macro photography. And yeah, your concern is valid. I've talked about this before. It's just that your focus on this, this singular focus, it drives people away. There may be some amazing portrait photographers looking into buying the OM system. There may be some journalists or documentary photographers, street photographers, or fashion photographers, or sports photographers, or landscape photographers, or architecture photographers. All these amazing photographers could have gone to the website and see what this OM1 is all about, and they look at it like, wow, this OM1 Mark II is like, birds, 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 wildlife, wildlife, birds. Okay, it's not for me. Let's go to Canon. <laughs> All right, Darko says, great, update almost one year from now. I know, right? It's like ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. It's too slow. Like we should have an update. I don't know if you say in two months, it's three months, I can still sort of like be okay with it. But to wait like more than half a year is just too much. Yumi says, this announcement just to buy some time and to reduce the burning flames. Yeah, it's the damage control, right? It's to, to, to control whatever problem now. It's like, okay, 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 things are getting a bit out of hand. Uh, we are being underwhelmed with all the, we are being overwhelmed with all the emails and people bombarding us. Let's just put out a statement to quiet things down, right? It seems like a quick patch to a bigger problem and I don't think it solves any problem because the firmware is too late and it's, didn't it didn't solve anything right seriously c line says six months is kind of telling to the cuts they must have made it the r d and technical stuffing i don't know hey like i would have you see right like i said there's two possibilities one is like they responded now and they started making it and two they could have done something months ago like what were they doing since may it is february 2024 and the last update was in may 2023 like, we could have gotten an update in October, in November, fixing some problems, adding one or two features. We don't need, like, major, huge updates, right? We just need regular, robust updates that they promise. If they have one update, say, in September, another update coming, say, this coming uh, March, I will be happy. I wouldn't be complaining. It's just that it was absolute silence from them since last May, and that's very concerning. And now they promise that the firmware is coming in fall this year. That's like not inspiring confidence. <laughs> Let me check something very quickly. Hopefully, I did not miss any anything here. All right, all right. K says, I'm glad for the OM1 dudes, but as a G9 Mark II user, I don't care. <laughs> well, good luck with the G9 Mark II and happy shooting. Luke says, I still don't have a reason to upgrade from my E1 Mark II. Yeah, I know, right? If I wasn't given the gift, uh, the OM1 as, as a gift from someone really generous, I probably still shoot with my EM1 Mark III. But I've given, if, if you guys are not aware of what's happened, uh, especially on this channel, when I received the OM1 as a gift, uh, I gave away the EM1 Mark III to a friend because the OM1 was given to me cost free. I got it completely free, right? And I felt that the right thing to do is to pay it forward. So I gave away my highest priced camera at the time was EM1 Mark III. I bought it with my own money. Of course, with some discounts from Olympus, I was the visionary back then. Uh, I gave that camera away to a friend who deserves it, uh, paying it forward. And yeah, if, if the OM1 never came to me, I would probably still be happy using my EM1 Mark III. And of course, I still have my EM1 Mark II, which now is my main camera. Luke says, uh, thanks, Robin. No worries. Uh, thanks for being here. I appreciate you. Jens says, I can't really shake the feeling of OM systems using the OM1 buyers as a sort of beta testers. It also tags along with the release schedule on their other models. Yeah, I know, right? It seems like we are being used at some point. Boris says, there's no improvement since EM1 Mark II, but the camera just gets more expensive, heavier, and bulkier. I think there are some improvements, like notably the bird detection autofocus, which helps the wildlife photographers uh, 
they say that it's magic, right? And there are some improvements there in here. Like finally, there's 4K60 in the OM1. We don't get 4K60 in the previous Olympus cameras. But uh, I also admit that in terms of video, they are falling really far behind on what Panasonic is doing, right? They have better bit rate, uh, better Kodak. The video has so many more options. They have 4K 120. The slow motion is better. There's like there's a ton of features more you can do with the Panasonic cameras. The G9 Mark II, the GH6, right, compared to the OM1. Uh, but yeah, I, I think to say that there's not much improvements, that's also not true. Uh, but but I do want to see more improvements, if that's what you're saying. I do want to see better image quality, new sensor, better dynamic range. Uh, if that's the case, I agree with you. C-Line says, I agree the announcement is probably a reaction to the backlash. It shows a lack of understanding of the core market. I know, right? Like... How hard it is to just listen to your customer's feedback? We are not that difficult to read, right? <laughs> Anyways, Azam Mamad says, Hi Robin, hey Azam, nice to see you here. For a specific shooting style and needs, have any firmware updates introduced features that have significantly improved your workflow or results? Which ones and how? Uh, I'll talk about video first. I am a content creator, so I'm a one-man crew. When I film my YouTube videos, I'm just one person. I put my camera on a tripod. So that firmware 3.0 for the EM1 Mark II improved the video features significantly, right? So uh, it wasn't so bad before, but the improvement is drastic. I can trust the camera 100%, as you can see on my videos on my channel. It doesn't lose focus on my face. I can just leave the camera on and do whatever I want to do, and I'll be almost 100% almost in focus, right? That's one thing. Uh, then there is the OM Lock 400 and the E1 Mark II, which wasn't there in the first place. Of course, it adds a lot of uh, color grading flexibility if I wanted to uh, improve the cinematic look in my videos, right? And uh, the autofocus improvement. Uh, they promised, not they promised, they actually implemented this in the firmware update for the EMR Mark II, right? If you use a f1.2 lens, which I do have, uh, if you use f1.2 lens, you can focus in low contrast, low light situations down to minus 6 EV. That is huge. I think previously it was minus 4. So that added flexibility, that added range, especially I do a lot of low light shooting, it just improves the confidence, it boosts uh, my chances of nailing more shots. And especially I deal with, I shoot a lot of theater work, I shoot a lot of uh, stage events, some of them happening in really low light situations. So having that improvement in low light shooting, it definitely helps me to get my shots a lot better if that makes sense, right? And one more thing, uh, previously when, let's say you shoot bursts, burst sequential, let's say 10 frames, 20 frames a second, with the EMR Mark II, the camera locks up, it freezes, right? Like you can't do anything, you can't see anything, you can't review or you can't change camera settings. But with the firmware upgrade, you can actually finally uh, while the camera is writing to the card, you can still change the ISO, change aperture, you can change, uh, you can go into the menu and look at other settings, and you can review the photographs that's already been written into the card at the same time while it's writing into the card. So I thought that was amazing. Uh, all this was done through firmware, and they do make a difference in my shooting. Does that answer your question? It's a significant update, right? Kelvin says, update is a joke. Yeah, I, I, I have to agree. All right, time check. It is uh, two minutes past 11. We have been talking nonstop for one hour. I am going to drink some water, keep myself up hydrated. Ah. And then some coffee. <laughs> Coffee is life. Just continue to show off my Canon lens mug. Hmm. Ah. All right, back to the comments. Whitson says, we need to insist on human detection. Yes. Uh, that's definitely one of the things that I think definitely possible to be implemented. I don't know why they don't want to include, like if they say that it's impossible to make it happen because of hardware limitations, why don't you just say it, right? <laughs> if you just say there's not enough RAM, just say there's not enough RAM, but they didn't say it, you see? So why aren't they implementing this? Okay, 
To people hating OM for the update software on the OM1, remember it wasn't OM's first camera but the last Olympus camera, so they might not have, they might also have legal problems doctoring around the OS. I don't know, hey, that's very hard to say, like, it's a speculation, so we don't know if it's true. They did have some firmware updates already, like firmware 1.5, it's just that they stopped, right? We just wanted to continue at least to fix some problems. Ram Gon says, for me, this update is not sufficient. It's happening six months from now and with very few improvements. My sentiments exactly. It's very frustrating to have a flagship camera and have received so few updates in two years. I fully agree. There is even a petition in Germany for the OM1 update. Good. We should all sign the petitions. We should show, we should come together, show our force and voice up and say we are really serious about this and we want this firmware update to happen. Crispy says they haven't worked on updates in all these months. They just stuck a new logo on the OM1 so that what did they do? Yeah, I hope that's not true. Hey, uh, there's also rumor flying around. I'm not indulging in rumors. I'm just saying that there's a possibility that the firmware up upgrade is there. The firmware update is there. It's just that they are not releasing it uh, to protect the sales of the OM1 Mark II. Speculation, pure assumption. I'm not saying this is true. I'm just hearing some rumors. Uh, either way, it's not looking good on OM Digital Solutions. Ivan says, Hi Robin, it seems that all talented engineers and programmers stay with Olympus Company and OM have to hire new personnel that couldn't handle all the greatness from Olympus. That's not true. I'm sure they can hire capable people. We are not lacking talent out there, right? I don't think that's, that's the case. Jeff Painter says, a lot more ads today on the stream. Oh no, I hope that's not too annoying. Uh, but do bear with me. I, I do need to earn some money from this ad so that, hey, I can continue to fund my content, right? Making videos for you guys. Ramon says, this announcement is a joke, not serious for buyers of OM1. Yeah. I agree with you. Chi says, as OM1 user, I feel more pissed off and too minor update. The planned release sounds just trying to comfort users, yet this is more treating us as idiot for investment made. Yeah. I share your sentiment and the right way or one, one of the things that we can do moving forward is to sign the petition. So I highly encourage you to sign a petition requesting the update to be done sooner rather than later and include more features. Uh, if you haven't signed the update, please do so. Link is in the description below, right? I think uh, I haven't checked at the moment, but before the stream started, we already have more than 1,000 people who signed the petition. So for those of you who are listening, you haven't signed the petition, please do sign the petition and please share the word out there. Share on your Facebook, Instagram, any any platform that you have and get more microphone threads supporters to come on board on the petition. Sign it and we can show, hey, we are serious about this, right? Eric says, back, listening and driving. Oh my goodness, please drive carefully, Eric. <laughs> my goodness, you can always come back later, hey. Gila says, nice live stream. Hey, hey Jojo. Enough drama for you, Jojo? <laughs> David says, maybe the word robust doesn't mean the same thing in Japanese. <laughs> they do have an English team. Hey, it's not everything done in Japanese. Uh, this side third screen says, Robin, do you think our system is now a complete research development and is a restarting a new identity eventually will break away from Olympus in style? It's very hard to tell at this point. I just feel that they are not doing enough and uh, we need more from them right and they need to listen more to the customers and they don't have to come up with magic bullets or they don't have to produce miracles all they have to do is just listen to the customers at this point and they'll be okay Sixness Vatmaster says, I've been getting far more keepers with my friend's Sony A6700 than I ever did with the OM1 shooting Jazz Club performance. I know, right? Like, I will not use the OM1 to shoot live performance. It is frustrating. Like, I wouldn't even start to, 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 to describe it. EMR Mark II, however, has incredibly high hit rate. Like, I will talk about this a bit more later. I'll share some photographs, right? Let me get to some comments first. Hash S. Thang says, True that OM focuses too much on wildlife and nature. Even the OM distributor told me that to get a full frame for portrait instead. Regardless, like we encourage taking it out. Like, seriously? What kind of... Oh my, that representative, like, seriously... 
that's not the right way to do business, right? Or if you can't, you want to shoot portrait, just get some other camera. My goodness, how are you going to sell all digital solutions cameras? Andrew Banner says, if your assumption for the delay of the firmware is to protect sales of the Mark II, I really wonder how many Mark 1 users will upgrade anyway, given the OEM Mark 1 has been out for manufacturer for months or so. I know, right? Like, seriously. Gordon says, OEM 1 and G9 Mark II are now the same price here in Canada. OEM Mark II is about $600 more. Uh, performance of Gina Mark II is more appealing and perhaps price of use on will drop soon. Yeah. Gina Mark II, like, especially if you're doing video, the Gina Mark II seems like a more solid alternative, right, to the OM1 or OM1 Mark II. And in terms of video specifications and capabilities, the OM1 Mark II is like exactly the same as OM1 and even the OM1's video shooting, uh, there are some complaints if you listen to the Petapixel, Chris and Jordan, especially Jordan Drake, he has shared a lot of his complaints about the, the video shooting on the OM1. Uh, yeah, generally the OM1's video, it still needs some work. All right. I've caught up with a comment and I want to dive into some photographs because uh, I've made it to a point where whenever I can, I want to not just talk about gear. I'm, I know it's fun to talk about cameras, lenses, how sharp this lens is, talking about bokeh, talking about image quality, high ISO and all that, right? It's fun uh, to, to indulge in gear, but I also want to emphasize uh, at the core of photography, the fundamentals, right? And uh, the only way to really talk about photography is to show photographs, look at photographs, and really discuss photographs. And this is actually not diverging out of the topic that we are talking today. Uh, the photographs that I'm about to show is from a shoot last year. I had this job. I was the official photographer for Yayasan Saim Darby Arts Festival 2023, which was happening in Kuala Lumpur Performing Arts Center. I was hired as the official photographer. I had a team of photographers under me. It was a two days event, Saturday and Sunday. But before that, there were so many events, uh, like press release, mini festival. There were some shows already happening leading up towards the event. So I have to shoot all of that. And during that actual festival, the art festival, which was the largest art festival in Malaysia, there were so many things happening at once, right? Inside the building, Kuala Lumpur Performing Arts Center, outside on the lawn, there was a main stage for large concerts. There's music performance, there's theater, there's storytelling, there's there's just so much, so many things happening all at once. There's craft, there's workshops, there's dance, there's so many things, right? And uh, my task is to shoot as much as possible. And of course, I'm not sharing everything. That's like tens of thousands of photographs taken just in that two days alone, right? Me and my team. I want to zoom in specifically on one particular event that I've shot. And I've actually shared this before already uh, in my one of my videos talking about uh, low light shooting with EMR Mark II. And the reason I want to share this particular set of photographs is because one, obviously, I'm allowed to share them. <laughs> I, I did a lot of shoots where, where it's a private client or it's the government or uh, it's a family. They, they don't want the their, their lunch photographs to be shown out in the public or it's a private couple uh, you know, having some, some really nice photographs. These are private photographs, right? It's, it's, I felt that it's also ethically wrong to share them and I respect the privacy and it's, it's cumbersome to ask for permission, especially like there are some jobs that I show shot for government agencies and these are no-no, right? Or even some big companies out there like private hospitals, things that's inside the hospital that's confidential and they don't want people to see it. So I'm sharing this set of photographs because I can, I'm allowed to. <laughs> so do bear with me, right? I know people say, Robin, why don't you share more photographs of, from your jobs? Like I can't, you know, there are some things that I can't just share openly, right? So this, this are a set of photographs that I, I can share. And this was um, a sort of like a mini concert. It's very unusual. So these people, they walk all around the place. There's no seats. Uh, the audience get to mingle with the performers. Uh, let's just get to the photographs. All right. So if you look at this photograph, you can immediately see that it's a little bit hazy. Uh, the, the camera that I used was EMR Mark II. And I used all the prime lenses that I have, the Panasonic 9 f1.7, Olympus 17 f1.8, Panasonic 15 f1.7, I think there was the Olympus 25 f1.2, 45 f1.8, and 75 f1.8. This was shot with uh, 45 f1.8. This was relatively in very low light, although the Im image does not look like it's in low light. Of course, I brightened everything in post-processing, uh, but I think I had to use ISO 3200, 6400 for more 
most of my shots. Some of them I even had to go up to ISO 12800, right? And yeah, let's just look at more photographs. Now, this is an example of a photograph where the OM-1 will suffer. I can almost guarantee you that the OM-1 will fail getting this shot. And these people, they don't stand still for very long. They constantly move. It is a mini concert and the movement is part of what made this concert very special. They'll stop for a while. You have like a few seconds to take your shot. And trust me, that OM-1, I've shot in this same stage before, same situation, almost similar lighting in this similar hazy situation they put some smoke effect on the stage om1 will hesitate and will fail i've tried single autofocus i've tried continuous autofocus i've tried continuous autofocus with tracking i've tried all point focus i've tried big focusing point i've tried small focusing point i've tried human face detection i've tried cat detection i've tried aeroplane i've tried everything they all fail and the failure rate is very high, it's almost 100%. And I, of course, as a professional photographer, you shouldn't just bring one camera with you. I put the OM-1 down, and at that time, the first time I had an EM-5 Mark III, I took out the EM-5 Mark III, put on the same lens, 45.8. Immediately, I got a shot, and the camera worked 100% all the time. That's when I put the OM-1 in the back and never took it out ever again for this type of shoot. The EM5 Mark III delivered all fantastic shots. And I remember not this particular job, but one of the jobs for Kuala Lumpur Performing Arts Center. It was printed and it was shown and exhibited before, uh, outside the, 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 the door, the entrance to, to the stage where people can actually see my shots. Huh. <laughs> anyway, let's look at more photographs. Uh, of course, there are moments like this that can happen very, very quickly. You only have a few seconds to capture. Imagine if the camera keeps hunting and hunting and hunting. Right. Uh, this situation, I would say the OM-1 will have no issue whatsoever because the contrast is there, uh, the human face is very well defined, the human detection, the AI, the human face detection will work really well. Uh, and then there's dances, right? There's people moving very fast. The dance is actually happening very fast. This image was shot at ISO 12800 because I need shutter speeds of about 1, 500, 1 over 500 uh, of a second or faster or one of 800 to get the shot, right? So if I don't need such a speed, I can get away with one of the 100 or 200 shutter speed with maybe ISO 1600 or 3200. But to be safe, I need fast shutter speed to freeze motion. I went out ISO 12800, right? And trust me, I've shot with OM-1, I've shot with EMR Mark II, I've compared the images side by side. The high ISO performance is the same. I know some of the ambassadors are claiming that, oh, there's two stops, high ISO improvement. Like what? Uh, what kind of mushroom are you eating? Are you smoking? Like I don't see it. Like seriously, I've been doing so many jobs with OM-1. I just don't see the improvement at all. <laughs> and it's worrying, right? Even the EM-1 Mark II, uh, sorry, OM-1 Mark II has the same image performance as the OM-1. This is another situation where the OM-1 will fail. Trust me. Look at the haze. Look at the, the, the fuzziness, right? It's a smoke effect that will cause some confusion to the autofocus point. And no matter how you put the autofocus point around, whether it's on the shirt, on the hair, on the eye, on wherever, it will still fail. And trust me, the human detection will not work. Sometimes the box will show up. But as you half press the shutter button, nothing, it captures nothing. It's out of focus, right? There's uh, some white shots for you to see the stage. Uh, I need to, uh, this was taken with the Panasonic 9 F1.7. Fantastic lens. I really love that lens a lot. And I love that it's F1.7, right? It makes a huge difference. My previous uh, wide angle lens was 8 to 25. And at 4, I need to bump up the ISO a lot more. I think I shot this at ISO 400 or 800, I can't remember. I don't have to go really high for this particular shot. And another example where the OM-1 might fail. Look at the face. It's a little bit blurry because of the smoke effect, right? There's not enough defined contrast. And it's not like it cannot focus. It can, but the success rate, or the hit rate is very low. There's a very high chance that the autofocus will miss critical accuracy. Like this will not miss completely compared to the previous shots. This will still be able to get some shots, but it's also very dangerous. There's a 50-50 chance of the, the autofocus on the OM-1 will fail. But uh, this was shot in an EM-1 Mark II. 
perfect, no issue whatsoever, right? Just to show a few more photographs of the people there, just to show you that they are moving, right? They are constantly moving. Now, some experts from I don't know where, I'm not gonna name name, I'm not gonna, I just, I, I'm not, I don't like to name and shame, right? But some experts, they come up with this solution as a response where I complain about this specific issue on the OM1, which is not fixed. Some experts, they, they come out and they say, oh, well, there is a solution for this. There is a fix. All you have to do is just to enlarge the live view to that specific part. And then you put your focusing point to where you want to be. And then you have press the shutter button. Voila, autofocus, confirm. And then you go out from the live view and you can grab the shot. Like, really? Like, you look at this performance. They're not going to stand there and wait for you. They're going to stand there for one or two seconds and they're going to move. Are you going to say that, oh, uh, don't, don't move. Hold that pose. All of you, please don't move. You shout as loud as you can. Please, guys, don't move. I need to enlarge my live view. Don't move. Stay, stay, stay. Okay, now I put my focusing point on your eye. Got it. All right. I, I got the shot. Okay, now you can move. Okay, just stay there again. I mean, seriously, this is not how photography works. Like, whoever suggested the enlarge to focus, to zoom, zoom, punch in, to, to do the focusing point, whoever does that, obviously has zero experience in real life practical shooting trust me i would like to see him try shooting this <laughs> this is another scenario where combination of smoke and combination of low light i use iso 2800 and not only that these are very fast moving dancers to freeze them in a very fast shutter speed this is really challenging and this is also another situation where you can see the smoke, right? Whenever there's smoke, the OM1 dies. <laughs> yeah, this, this is okay. This is okay. Just want to show you, oh, I love that Panasonic 9 f1.7. Hey, look at the image. It's stunning. Ah, such a wonderful lens. This was 45 f1.8, my favorite lens, my bread and butter. Like, when people look at this kind of photographs, they ask, Robin, was this shot with full-frame camera? I'm like, no. I think the, the question always is what camera are you using? But the, the correct question to ask is what lens are you using? It's the lens that makes all the difference. And it's, this 45 f1.8 is just magical. It has never let me down over all these years. And I just love it more and more every time I use it, especially shooting people. There's just something magical about this Olympus 45 f1.8. It's just, I just love it so much. Yep. And even this kind of situation where there's a lot of texture, like the tricky lighting, the OM1 will suffer. I'm just going to tell you, it will not completely miss the shot. The autofocus will still work, but it gets confused very, very easily. And especially if you set to all target, it just, it just runs all over the place. It shouldn't have happened, especially if you have uh, human face detection, right? That's why we want the human, human face AI to be implemented in the OM1, right? I think that will definitely help things in this particular tricky situation. This is a situation where the OM1 will 100% fail. You'll think that, oh, there are some edges in the nose, right? You go and try. I dare you to try. Trust me, the OM1 will definitely fail. This is a situation where it's, you look at the face, it's like almost completely dark. There's not enough features. There's not enough texture. There's not enough contrast for the OM1's single autofocus or continuous autofocus to work. Maybe if you focus on her shirt, you may get something, but this was taken with 75 f1.8. If you focus on the shirt, there's a chance that the eye will be out of focus. <laughs> yeah, just a few more shots. And that's it. That's the group photo to, to finish up. Of course, I've shot hundreds and hundreds of photos for this session. I've shot it twice. I was requested to go back to shoot a few more shots. And it was such a fun shoot. This was not the only shoot that I did. I was shooting nonstop from morning all the way until night for two days back to back. And you know what? This is the time when I really treasure micro four thirds. I was carrying my bag with me, EM1 Mark II. OM1 is in the bag. Uh, and then I have all my lenses with me, 45 f1.8, 25 f1.2, uh, 75 f1.8, uh, I have the 9 f1.7, uh, Panasonic 15 f1.7, all these lenses in a tiny bag with the EM1 Mark II. Uh, EM1 Mark II is on my hand, right, with one lens, and then uh, OM1 is in the bag as a backup, and I was running around uh, all over the place, and I really, and I have to run a lot, and holding the camera all day long 
having all the small lenses, I tell you, it is a game changer. I was so thankful I wasn't using a full frame system. I was so thankful I don't have all these large, huge, heavy lenses with me. I would have suffered so much. I would have had back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain, all kinds of pain, finger pains, right? <laughs> I didn't have any of those. But I think it also helps that I do care about my fitness a lot. I do lift weights a lot i do go to the gym and on, uh, on a regular basis and i make sure that my fitness is in good condition uh so that i can tackle really harsh shooting conditions like i have to shoot all day long carrying my gear i can handle that right i think fitness is another topic that we can talk about in another stream fitness for photographers so anyway yeah let's get to the comments i hope you guys enjoy that set of photographs right uh i'll, I'll see if i can share more in the future i need to seek permission i can't just throw my clients photographs out here for you to see right but yeah the drunk wedding photographer says good morning robin hey good morning to you well it's evening here so good evening to me azam muhammad says have you discovered unique applications for live composite beyond star trails or light painting share most creative or unexpected uses uh if you are shooting at an intersection i'm talking about light trails for cars uh, in a highway, not highway, but like intersections, uh, right? So, of course, all the cars can't go all at once. Some cars will have to stop to let the cars pass in one direction, right? And then there'll be a red light for the green light to cross. If you want all the lights to clash, you need to have the, the shutter speed open for the shutter open for maybe five minutes, two minutes to five minutes or even 10 minutes, right? And without being overexposed, the only way to do that is to use live composite. That's where you can get all the trails crisscrossing. I think that's one application you can use the live composite for. Ivan says, micro four thirds for birds only. What? Even ambassadors don't believe in this great system is shocking to me. Really? Which ambassador doesn't believe uh, for birds only? I thought all the ambassadors are shooting birds these days. Number six says, a private couple having... Oh my god, <laughs> no, no, not that, number six, no. <laughs> but I don't mind shooting them as long as I get paid. Whatever you want me to do, I will do it. Just pay me my rates, right? <laughs> C line says it will be really enlightening to see before and after processing comparisons of the photos. So that it will be too much work. Hey, so what happens is I have like a list of like thousands and thousands of uh, raw photographs. I don't pick and choose. I will go through them. I'll edit. I see this photograph that I want. I'll process export. Go to the next photograph, process, export. And after I'm done, I don't even look back at the raw photographs anymore. So for me to go back to the thousands and thousands of raw photographs, that is, yeah, that is gonna take like days. <laughs> I hope you understand. Maybe in the future, right? For I, I'm, the, the idea and suggestion is great, but maybe for future. But trust me, trust me, you will be disappointed. You know why? I'm not the kind of photographer who will edit my photographs from before to after that you can't even recognize the photograph you will realize that if i show my before and after the tweaks are so minor that it's almost as good as out of camera jpeg i am not kidding van how are you van is a fellow photographer i'm seeing him tomorrow night we are doing something together a, sh a very interesting shoot i can't wait to share with you guys uh van also has a youtube channel let me just bring up van's youtube channel if I can find it, I hope your SEO is good, Van. <laughs> I found it. All right. Uh, Van is a fellow photographer and uh, Van is the recipient of the EM1 Mark III. <laughs> He's an amazing, amazing friend. Uh, this is his YouTube channel. Please go and support him. Go to Van's YouTube channel, subscribe. He also talks about photography, some random lifestyle vlogs. And yeah, he's making content with my EM1 Mark II now. Sorry, EM1 Mark III. It's his now, it's not mine. With his EM1 Mark III now, it's in good hands. And he's a very talented photographer. I do learn a lot being with him. Thanks for dropping by, Van. And uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. A lot to catch up on. Whitson says, the small update makes me not want to buy another OM because whatever you buy, they'll leave you in the dust with the next release. I know, right? That's what we don't want to happen. And if they're set a precedent now that they don't care about the old cameras anymore, they just abandon it without any updates, this will happen again in the future. And we just don't want this to happen, right? We want them to continue to give us support, especially on the flagship level kind of camera, right? 
And number six is I'm getting a EMO Mark II for sure. Yeah, I'm loving that camera steals. K says, one of the best streams, no worries. Thank you so much for being here. Ed Duffy says, jumping on late, Robin. Hope you are doing well, sir. No worries. I'm doing quite okay here, doing quite all right. And I have caught up with the comments. That's great. And I'm going to drink some coffee. Hmm. Coffee is life. Ah. And if you guys are wondering, the camera that I'm using for streaming is the OM1 original. Uh, it's through a capture card, and a capture card is a 4K capable capture card. If you're wondering, this stream is in full uh, 4K resolution, if you didn't realize that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and apparently my computer can support 4K streams. Previously in the past few weeks, it has frozen a few times, and I think this video feed can get frozen at any time. And the lens that I'm using is the Panasonic 15 f1.7. I'm loving that lens. And I've just talked about that lens a few days ago in my recent video. I was comparing the Panasonic uh, 15 f1.7 versus the Olympus 17 f1.8. Uh, I use both lenses for street photography. And I find that I prefer the Panasonic 15 f1.7. It is a very subjective thing. It's like comparing uh, two very different focal lengths. The 15 is definitely wider. It's closer to the 28 millimeters classic equivalent focal length. The 17 is closer to 35. So 28 versus 35. It all depends on what kind of photographer that you are and what you do with your photography and how you approach your photography, right? Uh, I find myself loving the wider perspective a little bit more. That's why I prefer the Panasonic 15 f1.7. All right, let's see. If you guys are not aware, if you guys have just joined the stream, there is an online petition going on. Uh, you can find the link to the, to the petition in the description below. I spend the description, there's a petition to request for a firmware update for the OM1. Now, we understand that the OM Digital Solutions yesterday they've announced that the firmware update is coming, but the firmware update is coming in fall, which is like more than six months from now. We want it now, like at least in the next one or two months, right? I think it's possible, especially they just promise two things in the updates, right? The, uh, let's see what they promise here. They only promise autofocus some slight improvements and changing the button, reassigning the function of your button. Like, do we need to wait like six, seven months for this? I think this improvement is not enough. We also need more improvement, especially the human AI detection and some of the future improvements in the OM Mark II. I'm sure that can be ported over. They have promised and they mentioned that they can do it. I don't know why suddenly now they are promising this very few improvements. They even say that, oh no, the OM1's uh, autofocus will not be as good as OM Mark II after this update. Like, they didn't say why. Why can't this be implemented? Is it some hardware limitations? There's not enough clarification. There's not enough details. So please sign the petition. All right. Uh, the petition, let me go to the petition here. So this is the petition page. Uh, before the stream, there's about 1,000 supporters already. 1,000 people sign up. We need more people. We need to have our voices heard. And we. this is the time when we all should come together as Micro Four Thirds fans, Micro Four Thirds supporters. This is a peaceful way for us to show OM Digital Solutions that we care, that we have this OM1, and we want to stand by them. We support them, and they should listen to us. We have something to say, and this is a good way, a peaceful way for us to voice up our concerns, right? So yeah, uh, if you have not signed on the petition, please, please go to the petition page and sign up. That will mean a whole world to me. <laughs> C line say the high quality out of camera JPEG is part of what keeps me in the Olympus system. I always hear about the heavy color editing that people have to do to RAWs and Sony in spite of full frame sensors. Full frame sensor, they only promise uh, better resolution, better dynamic range, and better high ISO performance, right? They never promise better color. The color science is a secret sauce from the camera manufacturers, right? It's like Canon has their color science, which I actually quite like Canon's colors. Uh, Sony is lagging a little bit behind, but I think they are catching up. I think the newer cameras, the colors are getting better and better. They are not as bad as they were, like say 10 years ago, right? Um, Nikon has their own secret 
when it comes to color science, they have different way of rendering colors. Fuji loves their color simulation, the film simulation, which I don't see a point. But if you love all this filmic look, then of course Fuji is the camera for you. Uh, yeah, Panasonic has their own color science. I I have been using Olympus for all this time. I love how it renders skin tone. I love the color I'm getting from my Olympus cameras, and they always look right. And I don't post-process my images too much. Uh, the kind of photography that I do, I do a lot of uh, last star portraits, mostly done in available light. So sunlight, how much more do you need to edit, right? I do event coverage, documentary style. So my clients prefer the photographs to capture what actually happened so they can remind them of the real event that happened in real life, right? Like I'm not gonna edit the colors to look like film nostalgic or cinematic. No, that's not what they want. They want the images to look real. Uh, I also shot a lot of uh, stage performance, music, uh, mini concerts, theater, and the lights are already so good. Like if you're shooting stage, there's a lot of these uh, dramatic stage lights happening. It's already, all you have to do is just press the shutter button. Like don't, don't mess too much with the colors, right? And just allow the, the, the stage, the original magic to be captured by your frame your job as a photographer is to represent that slice of reality, right? You're not supposed to change the story. I know there are two types of photographer. One, you're creating, like let's say you're a studio photographer, you're a conceptual photographer, you have a blank slate, you're filling in your frame with your imagination. You have a visualization, you visualize a product, so you put everything together. That's when you create something. Fine, you can do whatever you want in that scenario, but I am not that kind of photographer. I'm the photographer who is paid to capture what is already there. I'm not supposed to remove things. I'm not supposed to add things. I'm not supposed to change the color unnecessarily. The most changes I did for my post-processing is to correct the colors so that the skin tone will look pleasing. And that's all I do for my editing, right? Clint says, Hi Robin, thanks for all your effort working for the updates and for sharing your images and experience. I'm looking at getting either the Olympus 25 f1.2 or 45 f1.2. What are your thoughts? Both are very different lenses. One is corresponding to 50 equivalent, one is corresponding to 90 or is closer to the 85mm classic. Uh, depends on what you are doing with these lenses. If you are doing portraits, I would think that the 45 will be a more suitable lens. You get shallow depth of field, you get uh, more compression in the background, so you have less background to work with. You get cleaner background. Uh, then the 45 also compress the perspective so that the subject, the human portrait, will look more flattering. The head, the nose, the, the, the facial features, and the, the limbs of the body will look more proportionate. It'll definitely look more flattering. Everything will look more natural compared to the 25 because uh, 25 is corresponding to 50 equivalent. It's still a great lens for portrait. It's just not that uh, great if you compare 20, uh, 45 but if you want to use the 45, you also have to make sure that you have enough space. You got to step back a little bit more to compose to fit the, the people in your portrait. Uh, yeah, and but if you are a 50 millimeters shooter, a lot of people are. Some of the greats shoot exclusively on 50. Uh, one of them is Henri Cartier-Bresson, the father of street photography. He shoots with 50 millimeters. And if you are a 50 millimeters shooter, Obviously, the 25 is your choice, right? So it all comes down to what you do in your photography. It all comes down to your preference. It all comes down to what kind of shooting style you're adopting in your photography, right? And both are excellent lenses. I've used both extensively over the years. I don't have the 45 f1.2, but I have the 25 f1.2. Uh, but I've used them so much because I, I have access to these uh, lenses when I was the Olympus visionary or when I was working for Olympus. <laughs> Tom says, yes, please, and much sooner than the four. Yeah, I know, right? We need the, the updates now. Like, why do we have to wait for so long? And yet for so minor updates, so it does not make sense. Eric says, okay, you convinced me on the way to get a 45. <laughs> 349 only in silver. Yeah, it's, it's a great lens. If you haven't used that lens, I think you should definitely explore it. I think it's one of the must-haves if you are an uh, Olympus shooter or a micro four thirds shooter. And I've talked about this before. I think it's a 10 reasons why I love the 45 f1.8 in one of my videos I made, I think one or two years ago. It's still one of my favorite lenses. It's so tiny, I think that lens it represents what micro four thirds is. It's so tiny, so compact, and yet when you look at the images that the lens delivers, man, it blows you away every single time. 
Andrew says, only 1,033 signs even now. Don't forget your signature will not count unless you check your emails and click the link you receive. That's correct. Please verify your email. <laughs> good evening, good evening, good evening to you too. Thanks for dropping by. Carlos Moya says, petition signed. Thank you so much for the support, Carlos. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, since we have time and I've caught up with the comment, wow, it's an achievement. I'm always behind comments. So tonight seems like you guys are a little bit quieter than usual. But any, if you guys have any questions or any comments, please feel free to put it in the chat. I'll, as you have probably realized by now, I reply and I respond to every single comment. I don't skip anyone i'll reply to every single one so if you have any questions for me please feel free to type into the chat i have another set of photographs i want to share <laughs> yes it is actually from the same uh job the yayasan saim darby arts festival it's one of the events that's happening in that festival that i was shooting and this particular one was storytelling so it's just a group of people on stage telling the story but there was a particularly difficult challenge that I was facing in this shoot. And I'll talk as I go along the photographs. All right, so this particular event is called Life Sundarian Berhat. And you can see that this particular shot is actually very bright. That's because I was shooting in very slow shutter speed. I think this is like uh, probably half a second and I was shooting at ISO 200 or 400. And this was, of course, taken with the amazing Panasonic 9 f1.7. Recently, I did a video shooting urban nightscapes uh, using the Panasonic 9 f1.7, and I was shooting at ISO 200, uh, f2.8, uh, at about two seconds shutter speed, right? And someone was questioning me in the comments and say, Robin, this is not even low light. This, the person is saying, Robin, this is so bright. You know, the city is well lit. I'm like, Dude, I saw 200, f2.8 at two seconds. That is not low light. Are you kidding me? Now, if I were to handhold the 9mm lens comfortably, right? Let's say usually, I'll probably need about 1 over 20th of a second. From two seconds to 1 over 20th of a second. Two seconds to one second is one stop. One second to half second is two stops. Half seconds to one over... Uh, a quarter of a second is three stops. One eighth of a second is four stops. Then about, okay, from one eighth is close to one tenth, right? So the next one is about one twentieth. That's five stops. So you need about five stops to get from two seconds to one over twentieth of a second to shoot comfortably, right? To mitigate shake. Even one over twentieth of a second is very risky. So I would say ISO 200. 200 in five stops, 200 to 400, 800, 1600, 2200. 6400 that's 6400 i saw 6400 is not low light are you kidding me at one over 20th of a second at i saw 6400 and to be super confident i will go to maybe one over 30th or one over 40th of a second and that would be about i saw 12800 like why are you guys talking this is super 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 low light <laughs> And yes, that's the wonder of shooting with EMA Mark II. The 5 assist image stabilization is amazing. So I just used the slow shutter speed. In this particular shot, you can see some blur in the human that's due to their movement. Humans don't stay still for very long. That's perfectly fine. I just want to capture the atmosphere. I want to show the audience as they are some blur in the foreground. It can be artistic. And you can see in the background, the entire place is still fully sharp, right? This is a white shot. The color is just amazing. This is the kind of shot that I will not mess with the color. Color. I will capture the ambient color as they are. This is available light and the color is already so amazing. Like you tell me, what are you editing? Like what else is there for you to edit, right? And my client will appreciate the color as they are. They spend money in the LED lights, the lighting and everything, right? This is another view. Now, the, the big challenge is this. You look at the stage. The stage has lights and the lights are harsh, like super, super unfiltered, harsh. It's like 12 o'clock noon, no clouds, clear sky, light from the top all the way down, kind of harsh, right? Can't see. Alex, they say something wrong? What do you mean can't see? Let me get back to this. Can you guys see this? Uh, the, the photograph? You guys seeing this fine? 
Alex says he can't see anything. I'm, I'll wait for some response. You guys seeing this photograph that I'm sharing? Anyone had any problem viewing this photograph? Let me know uh, while I wait for some response or drink some coffee. Let me check. Hmm. You guys seeing this fine? I hope you guys are okay. Right? I'll just continue unless uh, everyone's... I, I can't understand. Alex says uh, he can't see anything. Anyways. Alright, another shot of the crowd. Uh, you can see there's mixed colors, everything. I hope everything is okay. Uh, for this kind of situation, this was shot with the 9mm f1.7, right? Shoot wide open at f1.7, no worries. And then you can slow down your shutter speed to half a second, one second. If there's some movement in the faces, don't worry. No one's going to zoom in and look at the face. The important thing is to capture everything as clear as possible. You want to minimize noise. You want maximum dynamic range, right? Yeah, I'm going to go back to the previous shot because I want to say something in this shot. Now, if you look at this shot... You look at this particular shot, right? Uh, the stage has very harsh lighting and the audience is actually in very dark. And the original shot was actually a lot worse. The audience was in complete shadows. And in this particular shot, it's very important for you to lower down your ISO numbers. Stay as low as possible so that you have maintained enough dynamic range for you to post-process your image later, right? So you need to bring up the shadows and tone down the highlights. So this is a shot that's maybe ISO 400 or 800. I just need to minimize uh, the noise as I increase the shadow and uh, decrease Increase the highlights. Right, moving on. Uh, of course, I have to go closer to the performer. If you can see, I actually move a lot. I was running all over the places. You have to move. You really, really, really have to move, right? And the more you move, the more variety of shots that you can get, the, the better your deliverer will be. Your client will appreciate the variety of compositions, angles, and framing. Of course, you have to go close, right? Of course, I use 45 f1.8, and this was probably 75 f1.8 for this shot. Again, this kind of shot, if you are to post-process the image, you have to make sure that the skin color looks right. Uh, the original color was a little bit warm. It was yellowish. It was the tungsten light. It doesn't look nice, but here I've corrected it. It looks, looks neutral. It looks pleasing on the skin tone. Right. And this is another example of how harsh it is, right? The light comes from the top down, straight from the top down. And actually, if I didn't edit this, uh, you will not see anyone in the background. It's fine if you want to fully isolate the lady that's speaking, but I want to, to, to have all these people in the background because they are there. So I bring up the shadow as well. And as you can see, the dynamic range on the EMR Mark II is still perfectly fine. Uh, this situation, the OMR Mark II has no problem focusing. If you are to use the OMR Mark II, there's no smoke, there's enough contrast, there's enough details for the OMR to focus. I'm not saying the camera will fail all the time. I'm just saying in some specific situations, in low light, low contrast, yes, the OM1 will have some struggles. But this is not the situation. I will be confident to use the OM1 in this particular situation. Right, and of course, you you see the kind of the variety of composition that I'm doing, right? Uh, half body shots, going close, uh, full body shots, uh, isolating the person. I also have the shoot of the person with the people in the background. I'm going to share with you the hundreds and hundreds of shots that I've taken. I've only selected like uh, a dozen of shots or so to to demonstrate this about this particular shoot, right? I go close to the person, uh, as close as I can. This was shot with the 75 f1.8. If you are doing stage photography, if you're doing events, I tell you that 75 f1.8 is excellent. It's an amazing, amazing lens. It's 150 millimeters in equivalence, and yet it's at f1.8 bright aperture, meaning that in low light situation, you don't have to use very high ISO. This is just to show you how harsh the lighting is and where the light is coming from is directly from the top. <laughs> it's crazy, right? I don't like this lighting, but sometimes you don't get to control your lighting. And especially the kind of photographer that I am, I'm dealing with stage lights. Uh, there are people hired to do the lights. I have no control whatsoever. I just have to make the best of what I can in that situation. And this is like one of the worst I've encountered. And of course, I have to go close. You can see I have to go to the left, to the right, to the front, to the back, to the side. I go all over the place. You have to constantly move. You have to move to get all the variety of shots 
then you can have a more dynamic presentation. That's the, I wouldn't say a secret, but it's a tip. I see a lot of photographers, event photographers, they just stay in one spot, stand, and use the zoom lens, the white 70 to 200. They just zoom, 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 click, click, zoom, 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 click, click. They don't move. Trust me, the more you move, the better your shots will be. Right, uh, just share a few more shots here. We are coming to an end already. This is towards the end where they turn on the lights. You can see the lights at the top, uh, where of course now the entire hall is lit up because uh, this performer is asking everyone to participate in a, I think some kind of dance routine, right? So when this happens, immediately I, sh I went on the wide angle to capture everything because now everything is lit and you can see everything clearly now there's no difference between the stage and the audience right and from another you, you can see how much i move from the other side i come all the way to this side to capture this shot right and yeah and of course uh, now that there is more light on the participants or the audience i of course go in close and this particular shot is important because the the two people on the far right in dress in black those are the founders of the kuala lumpur performing arts center right joe hasham and uh Dato Farida uh, American. So Dato Farida and Joe Hasham, both iconic figures. They are the, the founders. They are the person keeping this place running. And <laughs> they are technically my bosses. So yeah. Right. And this is the final shot to show that they are taking their bow and they are exiting. Of course, I have like a lot, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of more shots uh, from this event. But I'm showing you, uh, I'm sharing some important tips and I hope you guys uh, can get these tips, right? If you're doing events, you have to move. You have to move a lot, right? And uh, there are some critical lenses that I use, 45 f1.8 and 75 f1.8. Go close, go far, capture the entire environment. Uh, I love the 9mm f1.7. I don't edit my images much. The colors are... They are as they are when I capture them. And the only editing that I did was to neutralize the skin tone. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much. And of course, in this situation, uh, it's a harsh lighting. There's dynamic range challenge. The stage is very bright and the audience is dark. So I share another tip, lower your ISO number so that when you edit your raw file, you can bring up the shadows and tone out the highlights and balance the shot a little bit later. Right, a little bit better. <laughs> I don't know why I say a little bit later, a little bit better man tongue tied all right julia says i love your set robin thank you so much jojo and i'm uh, meeting up jojo tomorrow tomorrow we are going to have a shoot and jojo is the leader he's the one organizing everything so thank you so much in advance for doing this jojo and if you need any help please don't hesitate to shout out i'll come over and do whatever i can looking forward to to the meet tomorrow and to the shoot sorry i can't uh read your name i can't, it's not a language that I can understand. Where did you get that micro four thirds cap? It's a custom made cap. <laughs> yeah, Alex said can't see, right? That's why I prompted, and uh, a lot of you have, have responded. Thank you so much. Uh, hello, Robin. Hello, crowd. A little late to the show, but finally here where we watch the beginning. No worries, no worries. And you can join in anytime, and I appreciate you being here. Going awesome places says, Yes, it's good. Thanks for the confirmation. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Alex says, I'm not. Like, I think there's something wrong on your side because everyone's saying, okay, Freezer says, can. Julia says, I can see the photo. Steve says, yes. <laughs> the drunk wedding photographer says, I can see it perfectly. And Trick says, yes, good. Uh, Steve says, yes, I can see it. Uh, number six says, yes. Uh, Carlos says, I can see. Van, thank you so much, Van. Van says, can see. Andrew says, it's fine. Everyone's saying it's fine. So Alex, I think the problem is on your end and I can't fix it if there is no problem for everyone else, right? Rebirth2526, hey, nice to see you here. Says, yeah, I can see it, right? And Big Bird says, you can see it, yep. Carlos says, did you use OM1? No. That job, uh, if you missed earlier, I said it was EM1 Mark II. All right. Uh, the reason is because I was shooting all kinds of different situations. There are some situations where if you were here earlier, uh, there was one situation where I said that the OM1 will definitely fail. That's why I was using the EM1 Mark II. It's my main uh, camera. Sixes members says, photo visible and okay. Thank you so much. Joshua Smith says, I can see Robin in the speedo, right? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't know whether that is a flattering comment or a disturbing one. <laughs> Anyways, I know. 
I'm wearing shorts. How would you going to focus if f1.7 fully open under that kind of lighting? Why not? It's a wide angle shot. Just focus on the crowd and everything will be in focus, right? So I think your concern is if you're shooting at f1.7, you can't get everything in focus. That is only true if you focus on things that is very close, like half a meter or nearer to you, right? If the, the subject is about five meters or in that situation, 10, 20 meters away, if you focus that, then everything that far away from you will be in focus. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, some part, maybe lots of the part due to f1.7 will be out of focus. No. Did you see the photograph? I'm gonna go back to the photograph again. Uh, where's that life center and Buhat? Obviously not this shot. Where was the shot with the... Like this one, this was 9, uh, 9 f1.7. Everything is in focus. Although it's shot f1.7. Like, you can try it, right? Don't, don't take my word for it. Like if you have the lens, uh, set it to f1.7. Of course you don't shoot like half a meter in front of you, right? If you shoot something that's close up, everything in behind you will be blur. But in this particular case, I was shooting at the man that's raising his hand, the performer, right? That's asking other people to follow his steps. If you focus on that, and everything will be in focus. Give it a try. Don't take my word for it. Yeah. This one is speaking on the stage. Looks nice. Thank you so much. Number six, how do you correct colors? I find a white spot. Don't find a white spot. Find a gray spot. The gray spot will give you a more accurate color because white balance is calibrated to what? 17% gray? Or something? <laughs> Man, my basics are like all rusty now. I should restart a crash course on photography. Andrew Banner says, that spotlight on the sitter is a great image. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. It, it's, just, it's not so much of me like uh, showing the photograph. It's more like I want you to see the importance of getting a variety of compositions. Go wide, go tight, go to the side, go to the back, go in front, go... You have to move to get and try to get as many uh, creative compositions as possible, right? Hmm. Andrew says, are you using two bodies or keep changing lenses? Keep changing lenses. The OM1 stays in the camera bag. There was a time when I used two bodies. That was like many years ago and it just doesn't work. It gets messy too quickly. And especially if I need to combine the images uh, together, it's just so much work. Uh, now I'm efficient enough to change lenses quickly and it helps that the lenses are so tiny, right? Just it's done. So it, since the lenses are so small and I'm quite... Uh, efficient in changing lenses. I'm running with just one camera and I change lenses. Well, it depends. Uh, all these shots, they are, I mean, it's a storytelling kind of shot, right? And the storyteller on the stage, they're not going to move. <laughs> so I have time to change lenses. It's not like I'm shooting a, a Kung Fu demonstration or a, 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 an F1 car race or something, right? So I'm shooting storytelling on stage where, yeah, I have time to change lens. Freezer Fridge says, which is better, Olympus EM10 Mark II, only nine I have micro four thirds lens or Sony A6000 with kit lens. EM10 Mark II with certain lenses can be better than A6000. Now, the problem with A6000 is the menu is not exactly smooth, there's some lag, and the live view is stutters in low light, whereas you don't have that problem with EM10 Mark II. And the A6000 does not have image stabilization, where the EM10 Mark II has powerful image stabilization, which makes it a far superior camera if you compare with the A6000. Peter says, I'm unhappy with bokeh of 20 f1.7. Should I invest with 25 f1.4 to replace 20? Yes, the 20 f1.7 has some very harsh, nervous bokeh. I think the 25 f1.4 will definitely solve that problem. Christoph says, hi Robin and everybody. Hey Christoph, very nice to see you here. Paul says, hi Robin. Hi Paul, nice to see you. And it says, thank you, sorry to interrupt, love your channel. No worries, you can see me fine now, right? Like, you can see my face here now, right? <laughs> hmm. Romy says, I've seen caps like that on Red Bubble. Oh, okay, that's cool. But this was custom made. Yeah. Alex says, fix. Okay, I did not fix anything. So yeah, I hope 
the problem was on your end. Tiago says, hi from Portugal. First time here in live mode. Generally, I can see, only see them later. No worries. Uh, if you are busy, if you have work to do, if other more imp important things to do, you can always come back and rewatch this on playback, right? Paul says, you inspired my Micro Four Thirds journey. Thank you. No worries, Paul. Glad that you are on the Micro Four Thirds journey. Tiago says, great videos, great work you do here. I must say it was because of you and your videos I got an email mark too and love it, thanks. No worries. And those photographs that I showed earlier, they were all taken with email mark too. James says, hey Robin, quick shout out. Appreciate your videos. I have an EP, EP2, EPM2. Uh, for what it is, it blows everything out of the water. Thank you so much. Yeah. Whether it's EP2 or EPM2, those are fantastic cameras. And I'm happy that you are here. And thank you so much for the support. I appreciate it. Eric says, okay, owner of 45 now. The 75 was at 6.9 and I told them, not now. Used to own a 45 many years ago on my EM5 Mark I and loved it. Wish I kept it instead of buying it again. No worries. I think uh, if you don't buy it new, you can always find it in the used market. And it's so cheap now. And... Trust me, it is a gem. It is a fantastic lens. It is my bread and butter. Every time I get some shots from it, I show it to my clients. They, a lot of them will go, wow. You know, they were like, wow, literally. And that's making me a lot of money throughout the past 10 years. The 45 F1.8. That's the most important lens in my arsenal. <laughs> All right. Uh, time check. It is almost midnight. It's two minutes to midnight here in Malaysia. I'm going to drink some water. I've been talking almost for two hours nonstop. Uh, drink some water, keep myself hydrated. Mm. And I, st I think I still have some coffee left. A few drops of coffee. I'm going to summarize. I've said everything I wanted to say, All right? Uh, about the OM1 Mark II, OM1's lack of uh, firmware update and the petition that uh, they have been started to get them to come up with the update sooner, right? So let's just, let me give a very quick summary of what I've said earlier about the OM1. OM1 was launched, uh, OM Digital Solutions promised firmware updates that did not deliver. The last firmware update they did was in May 2023. So they released a new camera, which is the OM1 Mark II, to replace the OM1 without any updates. Right? It seems like the OM1 was abandoned. A lot of people complained, and a lot of people are requesting for an update for the OM1. And a petition is being made. Uh, a petition started last two days ago on Tuesday, and uh, less than a day since the petition was launched, OM Digital Solutions announced that the firmware update is coming for the OM1. The announcement has some interesting information. It says that the firmware update is coming in fall, which is more than half a year from now. And the firmware update will only have some minor improvements or uh, updates on the OM1. So the petition stands. I've signed out on the petition. Uh, if you haven't, please sign out on the petition. It's in the description below the link. Please check it out. Sign it. Uh, this is a peaceful way for us to have our voice heard. We are requesting that the firmware update happens sooner rather than later. We want it now. If we can have it in the next one or two months, it'll be amazing. And we... It's just some minor updates that they promise, right? Some autofocus improvements. I hope they fix the autofocus problem, which I've highlighted earlier in the stream. I hope they can add some features like human AI, which they say they will not add, but I hope they change the position of that. They didn't say that they couldn't add it because of hardware limitations. They're just saying that this will not happen. We don't know why. I hope that they will give us more because I think OM1 is a flagship camera. It deserves more support. It deserves more improvements in the firmware update. And I think that we OM Digital Solutions supporters, we OM system users, Micro Four Thirds fans, we deserve better. We, we deserve better, right? So yeah, please sign the petition if you have not done so. And throughout this stream, I've also shared two sets of photographs, uh, the jobs that I did for last year's Yayasan Saim Darby Arts Festival, which was the largest arts festival in Malaysia, and I was the official photographer. So I was very proud to be the photographer for that festival. I shared some jobs because I can share them. A lot of my paid jobs, I can't share the photographs. And these jobs, uh, it was event coverage. I talk about how to handle challenging 
dynamic range situations, hard shooting situations. I talk about moving a lot. As a photographer, you need to give a, a creative, wide variety of compositions to your clients. The only way to do that is to move. And I also shared some tips about which lenses to use. I also talk about why I love the Panasonic 9 f1.7 so much. I talk about why the 45 f1.8 is such an amazing lens. I also talk about some situations where the OM1 will fail, especially the single autofocus or the continuous autofocus in low contrast, low light. Uh, I, that's why I'm using the EMO Mark II as my main camera. If you guys have any more questions or any more comments, please feel free to type in the chat. I will reply to as many as I can. All right. Sixtus Backmaster says, all the Olympus f1.8 primes are great. That should have been the one who made the 9mm, but that wouldn't be good for bird photography. <laughs> Hey, to be fair, Panasonic has some really good lenses as well, right? Uh, they have the amazing... Uh, f1.7 is amazing. I love their 15 f1.7 as well. So, yeah, don't discount Panasonic on their contributions to Micro Four Thirds. I thought they have some amazing lenses. Terry Day says, Hi, Robin from the Wet and Soggy UK. Hey, Terry. Very, very nice to see you here. All right. Uh... You guys have any more questions? Or is there anything you guys want me to talk about? Uh, yeah, feel free to put in the comments. I will wait for a little bit. All right. I think this is also the good time for me to thank everyone for being here. I know a lot of people here come in and tell me that, hey Robin, your videos are very helpful, especially the tips and tricks on using Olympus cameras, or Robin, you have inspired me to pick up the camera. I appreciate all the comments, but above all, uh, it is because of you guys being here that allowed me to do what I'm doing here. So I have to thank you guys again for being here, for supporting me, for watching all my videos, and. Truly, I've always said this, without you guys, there's no Robin Wong. And the only reason I'm able to do what I do here is because you guys enable me to do so. So I'm very thankful for the visits to or the view times on my uh, my videos. I'm, I'm very thankful for, for you, your comments. I'm very thankful that you guys are here watching me live. We still have 132 people. There's a lot of you here. And yeah. If you have found any of my sharing beneficial, if you have found my tips and tricks helpful, if you enjoyed looking at my photographs, I share new photographs every single week without fail uh, in the past four years, right? I think that's an achievement that I'm very proud of. I'm very consistent in this. If you found any of that beneficial to you, please consider buying me a cup of coffee. You can send some super chats uh, or buy me coffee. The link is up here. And, or you can contribute directly to my PayPal links in the description below. Any contribution will definitely help to fund my next video or any content that I'm doing here. Everything costs money, right? Uh, the light, the LED light, the microphone, the filter of the microphone, uh, the, the accent light at the back, the boom arm for the microphone, the capture card device for uh, capturing the... the, the uh, the feed from the camera, everything costs money. Uh, even sometimes when I go out and make video, I use my own funds, right? Nothing is free. But I'm, I gladly share as much as I can because I believe information is free. I don't want to charge any money. Uh, I'll gladly share as many photographs, gladly share as much knowledge. I'll gladly share uh, my experience whenever I can. Everything, everything about me, my technique, my experience, my photography, everything is put out there on my blog, on my YouTube channel. Everything is for everyone to see. I don't ask for anything. You can watch them for free. It's just that if you found it useful, feel free to send some contribution. It's highly appreciated. All right, we have some comments. Andrew says, are you planning a UK trip at all? Not at this time though. I think, uh, well, I am still recovering from uh, the pandemic, as you guys are aware, In the during the pandemic times, the two years, 20, 2021, 2022, uh, I had almost zero income 
from a photography jobs. I have some jobs there in here, very sparse, uh, but this income, they are negligible. I, at that year, 2021 and 2022, I survived mainly on the Google AdSense, the ads money from YouTube. <laughs> so technically, if you guys are watching me in that 2021, 2022, you guys saved my life. You guys kept me afloat. You guys fed me, right? And of course, uh, there are some generous donors, generous contributions from you guys uh, during that time from Buy Me Coffee or PayPal. You guys kept me going during that time. So 2023 was the year that my business was recovering. Now it's gotten a lot better. I'm getting busier with shoots. Uh, in fact, this week I had some shoots happening. I'm still in the process of editing my photos to be delivered to my clients. The business is recovering and I'm doing well. Don't worry, right? You can see my size. I'm not skinny. I'm not dying of hunger or anything. And I, I all my basic necessities are met. Like I have enough money to survive. Like Don't worry so much. It's just that uh, for me to plan a trip to UK, to spend that much money now, at this point, is a bit reckless. It's not wise. And especially, I'm now recovering. I need to build up enough emergency fund. <laughs> In case there's another pandemic, I don't know. The last one was quite traumatizing, right? Uh, yeah, I think saving enough money now is the priority. Uh, That's why I'm not buying new cameras there and here, right? Uh, of course, I'm buying old cameras that cost almost nothing to fund my to to continue making content. But yeah, making a UK trip is not uh, the the best decision for now. But maybe in the future, maybe the next few years, I don't know. If I have some big jobs happening, if I've saved enough money, I have some money to throw around yeah i think uk will be in the top of the list that i want to visit and she says what will be the next micro four thirds milestone i think vlogging they can target the vlogging segment like look at what dji is doing with the pocket three right i would think that something similar but not exactly like because micro four thirds is the best compromise in terms of size and quality you can offer a really nice blur background you can offer significant boost in dynamic range. You can still shoot in low light, and yet you can still keep everything really small. And they already have the amazing 5 assist image stabilization technology. All they have to do is just make sure the camera is suitable for vlogging. Make sure there's microphone input. Make sure the video codec is amazing. Make sure that uh, the camera has a flip screen. Not flip, the, the, the swivel screen, right? Make sure the camera is optimized in every way for vlogging. I look at what Sony is doing with the ZV line, right? I think Micro Four Thirds can attack that. And after all, everyone is making content now on TikTok, on Instagram Reels, or on Facebook, on, on YouTube. YouTube, right? I think content creation is the future. Yumi says, just want to say we appreciate your dedication to Micro Four Thirds and your engagement with your viewers, fans. No worries, Yumi. And I really appreciate you coming here every week. Like, seriously, I really appreciate it. And you are staying like from beginning until the end. I really appreciate that. Eric says, one more question. Do you expect OM systems to continue the EM10 series? Yes, they should, because it is the EM10 and the PAN series that generate the most income and profit for the company, not the OM1, not the OM5. They can sell as many units as they can on the OM1 and OM5, but you will see that the huge chunk of money comes from the lower level of the cameras, and that's the cash that will keep the company healthy and moving forward with the R&D and give us better cameras in the future. Roger says, good morning, Robin. Good morning to you too. Well, good evening to you. <laughs> Just gone on. We'll start from the No worries. No worries. Ivan says, Panasonic 9 f1.7 or Leica 12 f1.4. It's not exactly Leica, it's still Panasonic. 9 f1.7 is wider, 12 is not wide enough in a lot of the photographs that I've shown earlier. We'll take away with 9. If I were to shoot with the 12, it's definitely not wide enough. I already have my back on the wall, right? Uh, Nikolai says, good morning. Will there be an EM1X update? I don't know. <laughs> when 150 to 600 drop. When will the lens drop? I have no idea. Ask your OM Digital Solutions representative. I have no connection to them. I'm so sorry. Folita says, Hi Robin, I hope you are well. I'm doing quite alright. Do you think that EM1 Mark III can receive a firmware update to include the burden capability? I think it can, just like the EM1 X has received that, but uh, I don't think they will do it because the EM1 Mark III is an Olympus product and none of the Olympus products are getting any updates anymore. So moving forward, uh, they are updating only the flagships or the OM Digital Solutions uh, cameras. James says you're right, it's the e EPM2. Still trying to understand the white balancing. It's a bit reddish on the faces at times, but every once in a while it nails it so well. Still adjusting. My uh, 
recommendation is for you to tinker with the the a setting so if you look at the super control panel if you don't know how to activate that please find a tutorial i have a tutorial on my channel activate the super control panel white balance next to the white balance there is a and g a stands for amber g stands for green tinker with the a setting you may decrease it by one or two notch so that it's not too red a is amber is the reddish part uh or the green tinker with the a first and then the g if necessary i think the a will solve this problem for you andrew banner says i know how you feel robin i fret about planning a trip to the supermarket <laughs> Same, hey, now we can order everything online, like deliver to your doorstep, right? And that's what I do to prevent human contact. Penny says, Andrea Pazini raving about the new Fuji X100 Mark VI, making 50 times more pre-orders than Sony S7 uh, cameras. Retro is cool. Yes, like I just don't see why Micro Four Thirds players, they are not doing this, right? They are not tapping into this. There is clearly a segment for a compact size camera with a fixed lens for street photography, much like the X100 series camera. It has always been popular. Uh, it's not slowing down. It's getting more and more sales every generation. And look at the Ricoh GR series cameras. It has gotten a cult following. And Micro Four Thirds is the best candidate to fight because the sensor is small. They can keep the size of the camera small. They have the 5 axis image stabilization technology that can make the lens is even smaller and they have produced some really sharp lenses we have the amazing lenses from micro four thirds right so why don't they make this happen why don't they fight this is like instant cash why <laughs> i don't see it right like whoever is in the product strategy department that person needs to be replaced Terry says, it's off topic, but have you seen the Sigma launch for full frame, the very small light 500 f5.6, but no Marco Four Thirds version? Yes, we, I've seen the news. I haven't uh, read it in detail, uh, but yes, I've seen the news. Number six says, you're right, Robin, gray white points are the best. Uh, is that how you fix skin tones? So, well, depends on what I'm shooting. If I'm shooting a musician or a singer or a performer or a person giving a speech, the microphone, top of the microphone is usually gray. Huh. <laughs> That's why I use the one click white balance. Generally, it resolves the problem in almost instantaneously. I just have to like push the slider just a little bit on the white balance to get to where I want. But the starting point is always on the gray point. Nikolai says, I pre-ordered the lens on Amazon. It says it'll be here next Tuesday. Yeah, there you go. I think the 150 to 600 lens is available. And I spoke to the OM Digital Solutions, uh, their distributor in Malaysia, their, their agent, right? The official distributor. And uh, this was before the launch. And I actually already know these products are coming. And they told me that the products are available really soon, like almost immediately after launch. We don't have to wait long. Nicolas says, but no updates yet from on digital solutions or other photographers. I know Jimmy from Red35 said he tested it out. It worked well in one X, one three. Yeah, of course. Of course the lens will work well. No worries about that. Right? I think the complaint about the lens is the size, because it was designed for full frame, and the price, because it costs more than double of what the full frame counterparts are asking for. Alright, I have caught up on all the comments <laughs> and we still have 143 of you here my goodness and it is already past midnight here in malaysia uh oh there's a new comment i will read a few more comments if there are uh brendan says hi robin i'm shopping for a pen camera in use market for traveling what model should i consider anything from epl7 onwards epl7 would be like the the last camera like anything older than that i wouldn't recommend so you can find an epl7 epl8 epl9 pen f EP7, anything older than EPL7, that would be great. All right, that's all for the stream. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this live stream. I hope you guys have enjoyed spending time with me here. I appreciate you being here. Uh, again, if you want to support me, uh, this Buy Me Coffee link up there, or you can contribute to my PayPal directly in the, in the comments, not comments, description below. Again, if you have not signed up the petition, 
The petition is also in the description below. Please sign it. Show support as an OM Digital Solutions fan and supporter and a Micro Four Thirds supporter. I am a big Micro Four Thirds fan. I'm not going anywhere. I'll continue to use Micro Four Thirds products. I'll use my OM1, EMR Mark II for my shoots, uh, for my personal projects. I'll continue making videos and new videos every Monday and live streams every Thursday night, uh, at least night for Malaysian time here. And I will see you guys next week. And until then, please go out and take more photographs. Bye-bye.